Hi, everybody. It's Pie Quest episode 129. 129. It's January 10th, 2017, and it's just me and Walnut. Just us, just the two of us. After, especially after last week when Drew said he might be showing up more often. Oh, yeah, right. Was that his like, New Year's resolution? Because those things never work out. No, he's he actually had like... He talked a lot about like what his previous year was like last week. His year was yeah, crazy. Yeah, and like, he, he's had a rough go of it, so... Yeah. Uh, him not being here for it, like he had legitimate reasons. Yeah, um, and he, actually, this week was kind of a toss up. Um, he may actually be back a little more regularly soon. Um, he's actually having his tonsils out. I think it was next week. Oh yeah, that's right. He's five year old. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, he gets ear infections and gets tubes in his ears and gets his tonsils taken out. Yeah. So apparently, and I didn't know this either. If you have your tonsils out when you're an adult, it hits fucking brutal. Apparently, um, he's gonna be down for like two weeks. Oh yeah. On like nothing but liquids and stuff like that. Oh yeah. It's um kids. S- kids heal so much faster. Yeah. So adults, and I just watched a video, a buddy of mine, he, he was going for nursing and whatnot and isn't doing that anymore, but keeps sharing uh, Dr. Pimple Popper videos on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And one of them was a tonsillectomy and they burn it is what they do. Oh, they don't go in and cut it because it, it's right at the back of the throat. Yeah. They'll put you out and they burn the skin and they burn them out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's why it, it burns so much too. That's why it hurts so much. That sucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's getting that done soon. Yeah, so w- once he's healed up, he said he's going to try and show up a little more often. Yeah, that's not that's not bad. Mostly because, uh, I, not, not mostly because, but I, I even told him, I'm like, you live close enough that, like, if Sarah's not home or doesn't feel like driving you, I don't mind grabbing you and, like, bringing you. I mean, if he wants me to pick him up, he can download the Uber app and, <laughs> oh, oh, I hope he doesn't. He probably won't listen. He probably will listen because I'm going to say it to him on Saturday night. I don't think he D&D. listens. He does sometimes, on occasion. I think. I, I think it's rare. Yeah, I thought he used to only listen when he didn't come, but he hasn't come a lot. So yeah, and I, I, he listens to more podcasts than I do, and yeah. I don't have time to listen I, to this. Well, I don't have time to listen to this, and that's just because we go three hours most. Hey, of last time. week was less than an hour. I think it was actually it might have been like an hour and like a few seconds actually with like music and all. Well, that's because Druton's boring. He that's doesn't true. talk a lot. That's true. Um, but yeah, so yeah. some stuff happened. Yeah. Um, some some games have been canceled. Some some things are going on this week. Yeah. There was there was a, a a gaming festival this past weekend. There was there was a mag gaming festival. Yes. It's one of those porn things you go to, right? No. no. Sex conventions. No. 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 It's it's mag fest. Everybody knows mag fest. I talk about it every year, and it was it was a blast. I was. It was a much needed reprieve from normal life, and um, I don't, I don't often tend like any panels or anything going on there because, frankly, their panels aren't as good as Oticon's panels were, and even Oticon's panels sucked because not often were they industry heads; they were just random fans saying, "Let's have a fan panel and talk about yeah. fan stuff." Like their one panel, I'm upset I didn't know about until it was over. Um, getting over, uh, what was it? Getting, uh, uh, being a nerd and meeting non-nerds and getting over social anxiety or something like that. I need to find it. Uh, getting over shyness and meeting and, and and making new friends is what it was called. I was like, I kind of really wish I was in here just because I would have laughed at it the entire time. Yes. I'm a really shy guy. Yes. I could probably use some of those, um, of, uh, uh, things that they had said on there, but honestly, I'm not that shy. I don't. I don't need somebody to teach me how to not be shy. But you know, I mean, sometimes those things aren't just aren't necessarily teaching you to yeah. not be shy. Like it. It all depends on on how the panels actually run. Yeah, yeah. But like, it literally might just be like things not to do. Yeah, and I just I when I saw the name of it, I thought it was hilarious. Um, but they had they had all the normal stuff. They had the the concerts. They had the gaming room. I'll talk about those in a second. They had the um the PC library again. This or er, PC museum again this year and this they didn't have all the like all the hard drives and stuff on display they did have a uh nintendo disc system or oh the nintendo disc drive yeah or like the sony nintendo collaboration oh oh that the the nintendo playstation yeah whatever they called it no it, if you look if you actually look at it it's it was called the playstation okay yeah. but it's the nintendo PlayStation. they had one of those obviously they didn't have any games on it because yeah. it didn't have any games but they had one of those on display yeah the disc drive was actually a um for the nes like there was a, a like a floppy disc attachment okay. for the nes 
Okay. I think the N64 might have had something like that, too. I think. Okay. Um, but they And then they had just a bunch of old Macs and other different PCs sat around. I played uh, Sim City, but couldn't really get anything to work because it was like Sim City like two or three, which oh, I ne- wow. the, on like Windows ninety eight or something. So I couldn't really like I didn't know what I was doing. Freaking never played any of these games before, and I'm not I'm not gonna spend all this time at a convention. I spent all this money on to to do this stuff. So I'm I just gonna futz around on it a bit. Um, they had a bunch of new rooms that I never that I didn't bother going into because. They had, like, an armory for cosplay stuff, for, like, cosplay repair, weapon repair, and weapon use and whatnot. Um, I still have the mage's room, which I don't even know what the hell that is. I didn't even go into the land section, because I don't bring my gear to land anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's And it seems to me that the 3DS is really dying down pretty, pretty badly, because it used to be... My first year, I brought my 3DS, and I did Street Pass, and I was on that thing every 10 minutes... With another hundred people that I had passed by. Now I I can maybe go a day with only passing by 50 people. Well, like, when I went to... I think it, it depends, too. I think a lot of people aren't leaving it on yeah. for Street Pass because the battery, especially on, like, the, the XL and the new 3DS, isn't great. Mine went a day. Mine went a day and a half. Really? Yeah. If, if all you're doing is just leaving it on to walk around at Street Pass with it, it can go, like, a day and a half. Like, I... I literally did not turn my 3DS off from the time I got to Magfest till the time I left. I till it died sitting in my car overnight at my friend's wedding. I, I didn't realize that it. it I, I knew it went longer when it was in like that standby mode. I didn't realize yeah. it lasted that long. I it, I, it lasted. It lasted a full day, and then I plugged it in while I plugged it in while I was getting a shower and stuff. And then I walked around with it again, and then plugged it in again as when I went to bed. Um. Well, actually, no, I didn't even plug it in when I went to bed, but I left early this year to go to a wedding on Saturday, which was a big pain in the ass to get to. Yeah. Um, but ju- just so you know, um, the DS, their 3DS definitely isn't dying. I don't know if you saw this, but like there was a huge like shortage of them over the holidays. I did not know that. Um, I don't, they're still probably not actually in stock again, like on Amazon and like online retailers. I'm actually going to look real quick. Nintendo DS. Thank you, Amazon. Uh, where's just the regular one? I don't care about all the bullshit ones. Yeah, so, like, just your standard, like, black or red, still sold out all from Amazon. Okay. Um, They're only available from third-party resellers who are selling them for, like, $250 and up. Yeah. When it's only 99 Yeah. And, like, the 250 is the used one. So, like, I, the, the highest I saw... Oh, actually, no, the price looks like it has come down a bit. Um, Somebody's selling a new one for 239 Jesus But Christ. then, like... There is, like, just a used one for $283. It's crazy. I guess, and just people aren't street passing that much anymore. Yeah, because I was trying to find a new 3DS um, after Christmas and couldn't. Yeah. Um, Like, every GameStop is out of them, Walmart, Target, Best Buy, Amazon. That's crazy. Yeah, like, apparently between, like, Pokemon is apparently, like, the best seller for the 3DS in, like, years. So, like, the number of those games sold, like, I guess correlates well to the amount of 3DSs they have sold to. Yeah. Like, the, the sales on 3DS apparently went up 300%. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Yeah, and I guess, yeah, most people aren't street passing, or anybody who's getting it new don't know about street pass. But also, this year, it was a lot stronger with the cosplay game. Cosplay has never been a big strong point of MAGFest, but because of the location in the Gaylord with the whole, like, park area inside there... It makes for some good pictures. Is that a new hotel for them, or no? They've always been to the Gaylord. Okay, I, I've never been, so I just wasn't sure if they had like changed hotels or something. No, no, yeah, they've always been to the Gaylord, but it's just I, I know for some reason, like like I said, they have the Armory Room or whatever it was, the Forge, I think they called it for your cosplay stuff, and like it's never been a big deal until this year. There's so many more cosplayers this year. Um, I saw one kid dressed up i posted on facebook you might have seen it he's dressed up as spider-man and he yeah with the boxes uncle ben. of uncle ben's rice set up to look like a person i actually saw a cat 
posted something that same guy doing that just totally different spot because yours was like on like a balcony or something yeah they have an atrium and then they have yeah. uh, like a little park area inside there and then they have the whole convention center yeah her the picture she took was like same dude same like boxes like layout the same way same pose yeah but he was just in like a random hallway oh he probably has yeah. the boxes all taped and glued together so that all he has to do is drag them around i don't know i kind of i kind of hope he just has a bag that he keeps like putting them in that, and then laying it back out because that, that would just be make awesome. it cooler that would be awesome um but yeah, it was it was a good fest. Uh, the concerts weren't. It's not that they weren't good. It's just that I didn't really know anybody there, so I didn't really care too much. Um, not like the regular people that are always there weren't yeah, there. Like, like the Megas weren't there. The X Hunters. I mean, they did have the Meg Underground, but it wasn't as promoted as it was last year because the X Hunters have kind of stopped doing the X Hunter stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, they uh, started their new band called the Janitors or something like that, and because three of them are janitors. Yeah. And one of them works somewhere else. And they keep trying to pull him in. But I think they're like the three janitors is what they're called. And they keep trying to become the four janitors. But they he, he refuses to do it. Because they're all janitors at our old high school. Oh, I didn't know they all worked at the high school. Yeah, yeah. They all work at the high school. I knew Andy was. Yeah. But that was it. Um, So, like, I didn't see as much promotion for the Mag Underground this year as I did last year. But they did have that apparently on Friday. Instead of uh, last year, they had it on Saturday. Um, they did their mag prom this year, which was at midnight, which is kind of a little late for the music that they had. Was it all like prom music? Like It was uh, the one-ups. I've played them here a few times. They're like a jazzy funk cover, like jazzy funk lounge cover band of video game music. It's midnight. Yeah. You You need, like, upbeat. Yeah, and the worst part is, like, the band is so big, it took them half hour, 45 minutes to do sound check. Oh. Yeah, after the Proto Men had just played. So we, um... The Proto Men are, like, like a rock band, so... Yeah, they're, like, a uh, They're an amazing rock band. They did a a handful of new songs, a bunch of old songs. They might have done a cover or two. Um, oh, they did a cover... Uh, I think they did like a, aren't a, technically like all their songs kind of covers or no because they actually write songs about the game they're not doing well, the game they, music they wrote uh, Act One and Act Two and Act Three which should be coming out hopefully this year are all original music rock opera songs about Mega Man yeah I, um, I forgot that they actually they were the one that actually like because the X Hunters do like they just cover yeah they they do like metal music. versions yeah. of like the mega man songs yeah. and stuff like that like the megas they use the music but they write songs off of it yeah the uh the proto man they write original stuff and so they did they did some originals and they did um in hangover 1 the scene where mike tyson's there and the music's in the background do 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 and he punches uh was it phil yeah they did that song Oh, um, and so I, in the air tonight. In the air tonight. I really wanted to punch somebody when they got to that part. Uh, Phil Collins. Yeah, Phil Collins. I wanted to say Phil Collins. I was afraid I was going to be wrong. I think... I wonder, I'm not positive if that song is technically Phil Collins or if it's Genesis. Either way, the drumming and everything, like, and the singing is Phil Collins. Yeah. Um. So they did a, a couple of covers, and they were awesome. Then, did I see any... No, that, I only wanted to see Proto Man and the one-offs that night. The next night, I wanted to see... Uh, Bit Brigade. It is just Phil Collins. Yeah. It was after Genesis or in the middle, something like that. I wanted to see Arm Cannon and Bit Brigade. I think I ju- I think I only saw like one song of Arm Cannon, but they're they're just a cover band. They're a video game music cover band, so I didn't really miss too much, but I I like the way they do some of their stuff. And then Bit Brigade is the band that does um they play the game and the band will play the music for each level and whatnot. Okay. And they'll have somebody sitting there playing the game as they're doing it. And they got an hour long set. They did three games. This year, uh I can't can't find my badge, but this year's the badges were uh themed after Castlevania. Oh nice. So the first song they did was Castlevania One. And they they did the song. It was a song. The whole entire him playing Castlevania One was one song. Wow. Is what they say is how they call it. It was it's act- they did every song that they did and they did the level breaks and whatnot. Um, then he did what was the second one he did? Uh, Jesus, gonna drive me nuts if I can't remember. I think I had my phone on me and it was it was a game I never would have been able to beat as fast he did. 
I mean, that's pretty much all of those games when people. Yeah, yeah. Like I always like seeing people play. Like I saw a, somebody. There was a video of a kid doing a speed run or close to a speed run of Mega Man Two. I think it was. Yeah. With like a band playing all the music. Yeah. And like they were even playing like the interludes and like between level stuff. It was really cool. Yeah. It was. Uh, the second was Batman movie. Oh. With, it was the first Batman movie game. Yeah. So with Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Or yeah, yeah. And then the last one, the song that I freaked out the most about, they set it up and it says DK NES no music dot whatever on their ROM. And they're like, We we promised we probably wouldn't play this one. Uh it's a game we've never said we do or we said we'd never do, so uh we decided to give it a shot and they play it. And all of a sudden, it starts going, bum, 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 and it was DuckTales. Nice. They tricked us out. I freaked out. I kind of teared up a bit. And I got to watch him play DuckTales, the original, with them playing the backing track music. And So did he, he play the whole game? He played the whole game. Man, that's impressive. Oh, yeah. And he didn't die at all. Yeah, like when people, when people get up there to do that stuff, like yeah. they know how to get through that whole game without dying or like having yeah. any problems at all. And the crazy thing is I didn't realize how different the original to the remaster was. Yeah. Same thing with um like, what was that other one they did that? Oh, Mickey's um Castle of Illusion. Same way like the remaster was super different. Yeah, like there's a completely extra level and story concepts in the remaster than there was in than the original. Yeah, cause if you go back and play a lot of early like Nintendo games, there's not a whole lot of story in yeah. any of them. Like, even most of, like, the story you get is in... You have to read the manuals for it. Yeah. Like, even the... um, I don't know. Have you ever played the original Zelda? Uh, Yeah, I've played it. I mean, I've never beaten it myself. But, yeah, there's no story. It's just, it's dangerous to go yeah. alone. Take this. Yeah. And That's all you get. Not only that, but you actually needed the instruction manual because it came with the map in order to know which dungeon to go to. Really? Yeah. Because otherwise, like, you could just wander the map and you could find the dungeons, but you could end up in Dungeon 3 at first yeah and literally be sol yeah so it was um it was it was awesome at those concerts and bit brigade they're so much fun i don't know if they're on any listening platforms but if they are i suggest listening to them if you can find a video of them playing and doing it which magfest might have stuff online because they usually do simulcast it and they stream stuff so try and find that um i was super happy going into magfest because I didn't see their video game DJ battle going on. And then I got upset that it was Friday night at midnight. I was like, fuck you guys. Why do you actually like that? I or? hate it. Oh. I hate it so much. Because it's it's the video game DJ battle uh, presented by DJ Cutman and Grimecraft. And featuring so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And it's like, no, this isn't, this isn't good. Because it's literally them walking up, pressing play on their on their macbooks and just shaking their head they don't they don't like they don't like do any dj stuff they just press play they don't like make any breaks they don't like I, obviously they can't scratch records because they don't have records but they don't yeah. do any of that they just press play and like try to bring the hype it's it's not dj so they do all the they all they do all the producing beforehand and don't actually have anything to do while they're yeah. actually and the first year or the, my first year I was I was hyped for it. I was like, all right, this is going to be cool. And then I go and I sit there and it's not even a battle. It's all right, let's have DJ Cutman come out. And he goes and presses play and jumps and it goes like this. And then and then he's like, all right, here's Grimecraft. And Grimecraft comes out and presses play. It's the same DJs every year. There's no battle concept. It's not one DJ against another trying to battle it out to be the better DJ. No, it's just they all play a set. And it's three hours long, and it's bullshit. Yeah, it doesn't sound like fun. The next day, they had the very first Mag Rave, which I'm like, that's probably going to have been a better time. Kind of wish that was on Friday. Because you had to leave Saturday, right? I left Saturday morning. But, I mean, that was my... I, it's not... I, yeah. I didn't have to leave. I chose to leave. Yeah. But... You, I, you had a prior engagement uh, yeah, that I you didn't Yeah, I had a prior engagement to get to, and... I mean, I'm not, I'm not upset at MAGFest for planning the days out like that i can't be mad at them for doing the things the way they did but the video game dj battle is pointless uh, we went and saw um bit brigade who played before the dj battle if you looked behind you if you looked in front of you if you looked anywhere the entire room was filled the dj battle started as we were walking out of the room 
Nobody gave a shit about it. They And no, they weren't doing a room clear. The room just cleared. Everybody went to see Bit Brigade. Everybody left because they hate the video game DJ Battle. There's no one there. We went to the game room and they had it on their TVs. And I'm like, this is BS. They could have been, they weren't even like playing the music from it either. They just had it, they had the simulcast on the TV, no sound. Oh, wow. So I'm like, why did, if you're going to have it on the TV, if you're going to yeah. have it on display, play the music. Yeah, if you're showing concerts. Yeah. That's it was, funny. It was dumb. Um, but the uh, the game room, again, great, 24 hours, or open all weekend. How long of a drive is it to get down there? Uh, two and a half hours, two and a half, three hours. Not okay, bad. so it's actually, it's not bad, but it's it's far enough. It's it's further than Baltimore, shorter than Virginia, because it's technically still Maryland. Because, um, I mean, you, you can see, you can pretty much see D.C. out the windows, but it's the National Harbor where you still have to go a little bit more south to get to D.C. It's, you're on the, the Chesapeake Bay yeah. River. You're on that river. So it, you just have to, like, cr- like, move your head a little bit, and you can see the... the the uh, monument. Yeah. A lot of people tend to actually leave early sa- Sunday or sometimes even Saturday to go into the city to see monuments on Sunday. Oh, that's not a bad idea. No, no. no I want to do that one. I mean, the only downside is it's like January. So yeah, it's, it's fucking cold. cold. As hell. It, was, it was pretty, pretty... Actually, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't bad until Saturday when it... They right, because it didn't get cold until yeah. Saturday, really. It was It was pretty warm. Um, we And we wandered the... Uh, the Bay Area a bit to go get food, but we really only left the hotel. We planned properly this year. Last year we it was Nick's first year. He was it was his first convention, so he didn't know how he didn't know the general consensus of uh of con room uh etiquette like no shitting in the morning, no shitting at night, only shit when there's no one else in the room. Um, if you're gonna take a Man, shower, you shit when you got a shit though. <laughs> yeah, but it's if you got a shit and there's and everybody's in the room. You go down the lobby. Yeah. Because it's just, you, you got six people. Oh, no, I'm, I'm right there bathroom. with you. I was just. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, when you got to shit, you shit, but you don't shit in the room at certain times. You so, don't like, fill the tub up with ice like an asshole. Yeah, you, which, well, no, we didn't do that because we bring, we bring a cooler. Well, the one year we were going to fill up the sink with ice. I think it was like our second year at Oticon. Yeah, yeah. We were going to fill the sink with ice because the room didn't have a fridge or anything. Yeah. And we had gotten food and didn't really think about not having a place. Like, we didn't buy, like, food food. Like, we had gotten, like, takeout. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I forget. I think it was Brandon. It was Brandon. That started filling wanted... the, the tub. He's like, no, we're going to do this instead. And, like, filled most of the how, tub with How ice. are we going to get a shower? Yeah. Well, how are we supposed to wash our hands? In the fucking I, I, tub. I, yeah, I remember that. I, I'm, <laughs> I thank God I wasn't in your room that year. Because that was when... And, and it, I mean, Yeah, that was when I didn't get along with any of you guys besides Shahed mostly. Yeah. So I roomed with uh, Carson and her right. friends, and I was supposed to get the bed the last night, but then Papa decided to spend the night there, and I got shafted with the floor. Because that was honestly, pro- I don't care. Because that was probably your first year, uh, first or second, yeah. Because I think because you didn't go the first year, a lot of us went. Because I think you were still yeah. too young. Shahed went. I didn't go because that was when we still had family vacations, and I didn't really. I don't think I had a real job until the next year. Right. You know what? Maybe. That might have been my first year then too. I don't remember if you were there that my first year because I know I, I know Shawhead, Anthony, and Brandon. I think went a year prior. Yeah, I don't know if Eric did too. No, he didn't. Eric didn't go till I went. Me and Eric. Okay, then yeah, that was probably all of our first years. Yeah, because it was like Brandon, Richie, and Anthony's like second year. Yeah. Um. Man, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. We it's were babies over, back then. It's over too. a decade. You figure that was oh. Four or oh five? That's a long time. Yeah, it's crazy. I want to say it was oh um, five because I think it was a year at we were most of us were a year out of high school at the time. Yeah. Um. So where was I? Sorry, <laughs> I don't remember where I was. Um. um oh yeah, but last year, last year was a little rough because we didn't fully plan. We did bring like we brought bagels, but we got Sharky's bagels, so they started to get sale pretty quickly. Um. We we brought stuff to munch on, but we still we didn't have enough for two square meals, or at least a big enough meal and a a smaller meal or whatnot. So we we had to go out and get food twice a day and whatnot. This year, I brought my hot dog toaster, and we had <laughs> hot dogs. I brought um, oatmeal, so I had oatmeal in the morning. All we did is went and had a nice big lunch every day around like 3 o'clock. Then if you got hungry, you had fucking hot dogs. Yeah, I mean, because you... Cause you- I mean, hot dog buns are a little expensive, but like you can buy like oh. a, like a ton of packs of hot dogs, super cheap. 
I bought um, 20 hot dogs and 16 buns for under 10 bucks. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, and the only reason I got 16 buns is because they only sell them in packs of goddamn eight and not 10. Yeah, it's the that. dumbest fucking I hate thing. hate that. They sell hot dogs in packs of 10. They sell buns in packs of 16. You have to buy, what is it? 8, 16, 24. Uh, you have to buy five packs of... No. You have to buy eight packs of buns before you have an even ten. Eight packs of buns? No. Well, well no. If they cu- oh, wait, no. You have to buy three three buns and five... Or no, yeah. You have to buy four, four, uh, four dogs, 40 dogs, and you need to buy five buns to have enough, right? Because eight times five is 40. No, eight times five is, th- eight times five is 35. No, like, eight times five is, or five times seven is 35. Right. I'm sorry. My math is all kinds of fucked up today. Five times eight is 40. Yeah. So yeah, you need, I'm like, I'm not buying 40 goddamn hot dogs and buns. I mean, it it, w- it still would have only cost me 20 bucks. Yeah, it still would have been bad and you guys totally could have gone through them. Yeah, we, we I, I don't, I think there were no, none left. But like I told him, I was like, make sure to double up on some dogs and whatnot. And I, when I left, I left that there with my liquor, and it was we were well planned this year, and we were we had like we had a system going, no, not too much waiting, and it was a good, a lot better this year than last year. So we we barely left. So what is it? The, you, Anthony, Nick, me, Anthony, Nick, and uh, our friends Bill, Lauren, and this year uh, Bill's brother was there. In one room, or do you get two rooms? In one room. So it's uh, Anthony, uh, Buzz Solnick, we call him that because of his snoring, um, Bill and Lauren each get a bed, and then I sleep on the floor by choice, because, and this year especially, since I had to leave early, I slept on the floor with no air mattress, because if I was more comfortable, I was more likely to sleep in. Wait, now, it, this is the Nick I'm thinking of, right? Yeah. Okay. We call him Buzz Saw Nick because he snores like he's a Buzz Saw. He's ridiculous. I've been in the same room with him while he sleeps before. Yeah, yeah. It's he. He has. I'm pretty, we're pretty sure he has like a deviated septum. And, <laughs> it's yeah. Nick, so he's not going to fucking find out. No, no. He wants to. He keeps saying that he wants to. Oh, does year. he? Every year he's like, I, I should get this checked out and see if there's anything we could do and blah blah blah. But he was also congested, and there was one point during uh, Thursday night and a Friday morning where. Lauren told Bill to get up and roll Nick over. Because we told, I told Anthony last year, I was like, look, if he starts snoring, just roll him onto his side. He'll stop. Because that's, that's what it is. It's The airflow is weird, so you roll him onto the side, the airflow gets better. Yeah. And I, Anthony had passed out before that because if there's too much noise, Anthony can't sleep. And I, was, I had headphones in, and it was pretty loud, so I couldn't hear anything. And apparently Lauren had headphones in, but he was snoring through her headphones. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was pretty rough but uh it was a good time um the game room the game room was huge 24 hours like i said so many new arcade games so many new rhythm based arcade games like there's there's one are all the arcade cabs just set to free play yeah everything's free play and you can go you you can play whatever you want for however long you want you have to be courteous though yeah uh so generally it depends on like if it's ddr you play one session which is usually three songs um, if there's like if there's a game that has like sessions like that, you play one session, and then you leave. Uh, if it's a game that doesn't have sessions and it's just constant free play, try to be respectable. Like if it's a song game, try to be respectful. One or two songs at most. Yeah, don't go any more than that. Uh, and if you fail, walk away because you suck already. <laughs> um, there was this one game I played. It was uh, I think there was three people, three or four people could play it, and it was just. Uh, different colored buttons, and it's just a bunch of mini games. One of them was uh, there's a cat on the screen, and you have to hit the paddles back and forth to wave one of the like, the, cur- the one of the things, the pom poms, to get the cat's attention. And then once it got its attention and wants to jump, you hit yellow, and it jumps at it. <laughs> so I play like there's some ridiculous Japanese games. There was a like a rhythm based shooting game, which was really interesting. I didn't get to play that, but I. Walked around, I saw it a few times. Uh, It was really packed this year. So we've learned if there's ever a game you want to play, you have to get up early. Or stay up really, really late. Oh, no, no, no. No, Well, really, really late, as in 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. So you have to get up. Because Anthony and Nick, I crashed on Friday night. I crashed at about one thirty, two o'clock. What a bitch. 
Oh, I had I had to get up in the morning. And now I'm only fucking with you. And I crashed early because my phone had. That was the second time my phone had died throughout the night, and so I needed to charge my phone. And I was like, you know what? I if I go charge my phone for an hour and then come back down, I, I'm gonna just want to come back up and like half hour after that. Yeah. So I'll just call it a night. I'll have a, a drink, maybe a shot or two, and then just pass out. And I'll wake up early enough so that I can come down and catch any of the games I didn't get to play yet. So, because uh, there was one game I really wanted to play, they had Battle Pots, like uh, Battle Tech. Okay. So it was Mech Warrior. You mean Robo Tech, right? Robo Tech. Well, no, it was Mech Warrior. Well, no, you you said Battle Tech. I were you thinking? Well, Robotech? no, the pods are like Battle Tech, Battle Pods, or something. Oh, like okay. They're like twenty something years old, like twenty five years old. You get in this thing, it closes shut. You have there's foot pedals, there's a joystick, there's uh, uh, throttles. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, there's buttons all in front of you. I have, I had a, I took a Snapchat of it. I should have downloaded that Snapchat because I I just wanted to take a quick video of the thing and send it, and then the battle got started as I was taking the videos. I was oh shit, I had to send it, and then <laughs> and I forgot to download it. Um, I think I might have taken a picture of the inside. I can't remember, but it was it was really neat. They had it on the most basic mode, so if it was on a more difficult mode, there's two pedals, a left and a right. You would have to hit each pedal for each foot. But because they had it on most basic, you just throttle up to go, hit the button to go in reverse, which kind of confused me because you would think throttle up to go forward, throttle back to go backwards. Yeah. No, it was if it's back, it's stopped. If it's forward, it's moving. If you're hitting the button, it's going backwards. It was kind of confusing. It sounds neat, though. It was. It was really cool. Uh, but that had a line all weekend. Even when I, I went there at 9 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning, the, I still had to wait in line t- for two sessions before because th- there was probably 12 people at a time oh wow so yeah i had to wait there was one session going on when i got in line and one session queued up so they went in and then i got in right after them this is probably like 15 20 minutes yeah not long um yeah that's one of the like max is one of those things where like i'd like to go but not for like the whole weekend just because I'm not as into like video game music. Yeah. Like like that's like I like video game music like in games. Yeah. But not so much like listening to oh, bands play on. Last year musically, a lot better because they had they had the journey thing where it was uh an orchestra playing journey live while somebody was playing journey. Which is cool. Um they had they also did it with Mighty Number no. Nine, I believe. Uh, or not Mighty Number no. Nine, they did it with Gunvolt. Okay. Or something like that. They did it with one of the Papa games. Um, did you see them at all? I did not. I tried to get in touch with Papa, but he the signal is so sporadic in that building, and they don't offer free Wi-Fi in the convention center that it's like Papa's only way to get in touch with him was Facebook Messenger, right? Because his phone is Japanese right now. Yeah. So, um, so there's a couple of people. There's one. I have a buddy that I got to get in contact with. I owe him some money because he paid for my ticket still. Um, a couple of people I'd like tried to hook up with, meet up with, and just never never worked out. So so if you were going to go for just one day, which day would you go for? Um, depends. I, I can't really answer that because it depends on the schedule of the concerts. Because I know like most places, like Saturday's the busiest day. I, Saturday is pretty... They don't... This year, at least, they didn't do day passes. Oh really? Yeah, they had so much, such a screw up, screwed up way that they sold their passes this year. I remember you saying, "Yeah, it was bullshit." The reason my buddy paid for it is because a week after they went on sale, they jumped from fifty to sixty five. I was gonna say, I, re- I was gonna actually ask. I'm like, was it Magfest that did that stupid shit where, like, rather than having date caps, they had like just well, number of tickets they, sold? They didn't have just they didn't have the, they had date caps, which is what they advertised on there. And they had ticket sale goals, which they didn't advertise on there. And that was, I got into so many arguments with people because they didn't advertise properly how they were doing ticket sales. Um, so no, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to bump into the him. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, a hu- it's gotten a lot bigger. We're afraid they're going to have to move it from the gay Lord to something bigger, but we can't think of, we're afraid they might go to Baltimore and no one wants to go to Baltimore. Like the Gaylord is perfect for it. Like I, a lot of us would rather them do a cap than for them to move. Yeah, especially because like Baltimore in the winter is even worse. Yeah, because like yes, there are what, it's two hotels connected directly to the convention center that you can get to with minimal outdoor exposure. Yeah, but I think it's the 
the one has the tunnel, so you don't have to go outside at all. Yeah. But the uh, one behind it, like off of um that main street, yeah, you have to walk on the sky bridge to get in. Yeah. So like, you got to go outside for at least a block or two. Oh yeah, it's and it, then like there's, there's no, no food, food like, at all. You have to go all the way down to the harbor, yeah. and like it's only like a fifteen minute walk, give or take, like depending on how slow you walk. Yeah. But like in fucking January, that would be the worst would, goddamn yeah, oh, time with the water be, right there. Holy shit! Horrible. It would be horrible. I don't so. like walking my dog right now because of, of the wind coming <laughs> off the water. <water-ish>. Yeah. Like. <laughs> It would be terrible, but we're we're afraid they're. That's why I feel like they did this thing with the ticket prices to make it show that they're selling too much too fast. So they might need to grow and go to somewhere bigger. But I mean, there's like, probably st- other convention centers that you're just not like familiar with. It, apparently, they could maybe try to go to the one that's in D.C. that Oticon's going to. But again, I don't oh, know. Oh, Oticon's moving all the way to D.C. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, not, it's, it's not really an all the way. It's, I mean, that's another hour drive. Like, yeah. from, like, that's an hour from where they're at now. Yeah. That's why, like, I didn't realize they were moving that far. Yeah, I think it was D.C. I mean, again, this was also three, four years ago when I, le- when I wrote about it on the website. Right, yeah. So it might have Was changed. this their last year in Baltimore? This year, 2016 was their last year in Baltimore. Kind of sad I didn't just go down for a day. I wanted to. I wanted to just to like see what you it should was have like. said something because I probably would have gone with you. I, I don't think I had money. That's probably why I didn't not. Do it. Otherwise, I would have. Yeah, I would have gone down actually, for just a day. I had an open invite to go the entire weekend. If I had money, I would have because I got I got an extra day off from work, and I I only used that on the last day of August because I had to. Yeah, I didn't have any other time to use it. Do you get like your birthday off or yeah. a day off for your birthday? Yeah, and, but you have to use it on your birthday month. But you you can use it any time in the month. Yeah. That's 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 actually kind of cool. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, um, but yeah, I, I totally would have gone to Oticon for yeah. just our last time in Baltimore. Just a day, just to check yeah. it out. I mean, they will be back. It's just the Baltimore Convention Center is being renovated. Probably might be being expanded. Right. So they're supposed to be going back. Hopefully. Uh. But yeah, I I enjoyed Magfest. I'm trying to think if there are any like games that stand out that I played besides that Battle Pod thing. Not really. Uh, there were some indie games. I mean, you were also only there for Thursday and Friday, right? Yeah, it was, I was only there for two, two and a half days, I guess you could say. Or actually, really a day and a half. Because we didn't get there until closer to two o'clock, two, three o'clock on uh, Thursday. And we didn't actually... When does it actually go- start? Does it start on Thursday? It starts Thursday morning at okay. noon is when the game room is supposed to open up. But last year, it didn't open up till like one or two. Oh, wow. So, like, yeah, you... A lot of people go there Wednesday for some unknown reason, and they'll be there till Monday. But you don't need to be there that long. Well, I mean, some people might just because, like, you figure like when we went to Otakon, we always went down the the day before. Well, that was that was different because that was pre pre. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, we were there to pick it, up badges. It took forever to get badges <laughs> for Otakon. Yeah. Magfest, it takes no time at all. So it only took forever to get badges if you actually waited in line. Yeah. If you, after our like first year, if you did what we did and just waited until fuck the fucking line was gone, then you just strolled in and picked them up. Waited till five o'clock and then you walked right in. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, what I. Yeah, that's what I did after after that first year. I, yeah, yeah. That first year we got in line as soon as we got there. We waited, and the only reason we waited is because they weren't letting people in. Yeah, because they don't start until like three, and we were there at like noon. Yeah. So we're like, oh, I guess we just have to wait in line because we're stupid. Yeah. And stupid yeah. kids. Oda I mean, Con, the convention of lines. That's what Oda means. Is line I mean, con. There were still a lot of people that we knew that would wait in line because they thought it yeah. was like the thing to do. It's like no, no like that's no. the worst yeah. use of your time. Go do something fun. It was uh, th- yeah. There, there's, there's practically practically no lines at Magfest except for in the game room. Um, their game selection for the consoles weren't all that great, but you could just you can always just go up and say, "Hey, is there any way?" You- you guys have this game. Can I play it? Because I kept looking for Jurassic Park on Genesis <laughs> because that's kind of like a tradition with me now. I have to play Jurassic Park at Magfest because I need to beat it, and I didn't play it at all this year. So, are you actually trying to find like like you actually want to sit down for an entire game and beat it while you're there? Yeah, like that. That is that's kind of a goal for me for next year at least is to find a game that I know I can beat and beat it while I'm there, or at least get as far as I possibly can. And I don't want it to be an easy game. But I don't want it to be an extremely long game. Like, they had uh, Bloodborne out. I'm like, you know what? Had I known about this? Had I known they had it out maybe yesterday? I probably would have sat down at some point after 
the concerts, maybe taking a nap before the concerts, sat down and just played this straight through if I could have. Not doing all the bosses, but just just beating it Yeah. one time in general. I was going to say, I mean, you'd probably be fine with like any NES g- era game. Yeah. Or like a good deal of Super Nintendo games too, where yeah. like you can beat them in a handful of hours. Yeah, like I um I sat down and I started playing Sonic Sonic 2. And I, if I had tried harder, I probably could have beaten it, but I was tired. So I decided to go back to the room. Yeah, Sonic 2 is not a hard game to beat. No, it's. but I was also trying to do... Um, Except the fun, fucking chemical plant. You make one wrong move there and you're oh, just Oh, that, that was my... I got to the chemical plant and I, I died once and I was like, fuck this. And I just died two more times right after that because I was frustrated with the chemical plant. Because yeah. it's world fucking 2. Yeah, I, can't, I don't have any problems with the chemical plant now, but I remember back in the day, like... That was like the bane of my existence. It's that one and um, Mystic Hill Zone. Oh, Mystic Hill Zone is a pain in the ass. Maybe not Mystic. No, Mystic Hill Zone's not right. The one where you have water, where if you make like if you don't jump right, you fall down into the water. Yeah, and, and like you're like, underwater like, for the rest of the like, level. All like ancient Caesar, like yeah, and the the pillars that shoot the arrows. If you yeah, yeah yeah, that one's a pain in the ass. My issue was I was trying to get the Chaos Emeralds as well. Oh. So I was every single one of them. I'll, every time I got to a checkpoint, I made sure I had 50 coins or 50 rings and fucking tails kept fucking losing it for me. Yeah, that's why you turn tails off. Can you? Yeah. How? Because I hit single player and it was just in When there. you start the game, there's like an option to not have tails there. Uh, well, now I know that for next time. Yeah, you can you can have it so it's just Sonic or just tails. Yeah. All right, I'll have to, I'll have to do that next time then. Actually, I'm almost positive you can do that in Sonic 2. I, I hope that's not Sonic 3 only. Sonic 3, you can... Sonic 3 gives you a choice, Sonic, Tails, or both. I'm pretty sure Sonic 2 lets you do it, too. But in Sonic 3, Tails is more responsive to you and doesn't affect your your emeralds. Whereas in Sonic 2, Tails isn't super responsive, and if he gathers coins, or not coins, rings, and he gets hit with something, he loses those rings. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a pain in the goddamn it. Especially on those um those chaos emerald runs. Yeah, yeah. Where like you're trying to get them all, but he might like scoop some too, and then yeah. if he doesn't jump when you jump, yeah, because there there's a delay in his jump because you always have to be up front. So you jump, like if you jump, he gets in front of you, so he jumps so that you get in front of him or something. Yeah, it's really oh my god, it drove me nuts. That's 1992 in video games. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there wasn't. I played a little bit of uh, was it NES? Uh, um, Lion King, I believe. SNES. I mean, SNES. I played a little bit. That of game S- is fucking terrible. Yeah. I mean, was, it's great, I mean, but the, it's fucking it was on terrible. The, it was on the first level, and I couldn't beat it. Wait, did you? Was it an SNES or Sega? It was SNES. All right. I don't know if that was different. The first, the first level was the level with "Can't Wait to Be King," or at least the level that was on there, which I was told was the first level. Just can't wait to be king, and I did a continue because the person only had one life who stopped playing. So I start playing, and I die. Did it have this weird monkey puzzle where you had to have like yeah. the monkeys throw you around? Yeah. Okay, so that's it's the same as on Genesis because Aladdin, I know for sure, it, it, there's two different Aladdin games. There's the one that was released on Super Nintendo and the one that was released on Sega. Yeah, and like they are like the Super Nintendo one, Aladdin just throws apples and jumps on people's heads. Sega, he had a fucking sword, and he fucking yeah. murdered those goddamn guards. Yeah. Um, plus, like, the Cave of Wonders and stuff was different. And oh, yeah. But, I think they um, both had the carpet ride, but they were differently... Yeah. I was I was doing uh, the one level for... The one level in Lion King, the only level I got to, and I would get to the ostrich part, and it would get to the part where you need to double jump. But I would always double jump, and the ostrich would get hit and be knocked back, and I would land and die. Nice. So I don't know what I was doing wrong. Or are you sure, sure it's a double jump and not duck? No, it was two arrows up. Oh. Yeah, I don't know then. Yeah, so you have to double jump in just a way. They tell you what to do. The second set, they oh. don't. So you just have to pay attention to what you're jumping or ducking under to know which jump and stuff you're supposed to no, use. Oh, yeah. It's... And it's fine because, honestly, if you would have gotten to the next level, you would have been even more frustrated because yeah. the, the elephant graveyard is even worse. I played uh, one level of Sonic 3D Blast. I'm sorry. And that's about as all as I can handle. Yeah. Because the, um, I guess the aspect ratio of the game, like, like where the camera is and where you have to go, and I'm terrible with platforming in general, I, I just, I couldn't do it. I was like, oh, this is terrible. Sounds about right. Um, <laughs> and that one, to get the Chaos Emeralds, you had to get 50 coins, or 50 rings, and then you had to find either nail, tails, or knuckles, and pay them 
and they'll send you into the zones. Oh, that's fucked. Yeah. See, what you should have done is gone back to Sonic 2 and put in the debug code to um, be able to turn into rings. <laughs> yeah, look, the, if you go um, to the sound test in Sonic 2, um, there's the you, do, you play the right songs on the sound test and it unlocks the different codes. Like, one of them is turning into supersonic every time you have 50 rings. Okay. So you get 50 rings, you jump, he fucking turns Super Saiyan. Um, yeah. And then you just fly through all the levels. It's great. Yeah. But there's also a code for um, for debug, which lets you turn into all the different assets from the game, including rings. Yeah. So you can turn Sonic into a ring and then place rings. So you can literally just leave a pile of 50 rings right where you start in a level and turn into Super Sonic right when it starts and then just blow through the level nice it's cool for the later level um well basically the last level when you fight um robot sonic yeah because there's no coins in that or rings in that level really yeah because it, it it's just um it's like a space station so you oh, just yeah that's right you go and you run down you the hall and then you just fight you, super sonic yeah you fight or you fight Metal robot sonic, sonic. and right. so in that tunnel you can lay the 50 coins run into the room and then as soon as it starts turn into super sonic and be invincible yeah it's great yeah and then every so often, if you need to, you just put the, you go back into the coin mode. You drop some more because um, as you're supersonic, yeah, every slowly, second the slowly, coins slow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and my streak for uh, NFL Blitz, which they have an arcade for, it's fully over. I am now. I was what was I? I think it was four, five, and zero, oh, and now I'm five and two. Damn. Yeah. Well, I. I was five and oh, I was five and one going into Magfest, and I got my second loss against Anthony. So I'm now defeated against Anthony, and I'm defeated against my buddy that I play at Firefly. My favorite thing about Blitz was uh, picking the Hail Mary and running all the way to the other end zone, and then throwing a touchdown pass. You know, I just I got like what's the word? I got like very like overconfident in my skills, I guess, and I would try, I would go for it. At like fourth and fifteen and stuff like that, just because I'm like, well, fuck it. If I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose terribly, no, dude. That's how I play football games. I never fucking punt or kick yeah. or whatever. Well, I was like, I'm not doing a field goal if I'm right here. I'm going for it. I- I'll occasionally and do like fake would, field goals. It would intercept and then they would run it back. So it sucks. So we did the Battle of Florida. We did Jacksonville versus uh, Tampa Bay. Nice or the Dolphins, Orlando, Miami, Miami. That's it. Dude, and you watch football. I don't watch Florida football. So? You, you play fantasy football. Don't you need yeah, to know all the teams? But no, you just need to know the players. <laughs> I know I know the Dolphins, and I know the Jacksonville Jaguars. You don't call them the Miami Dolphins. You call them the goddamn Dolphins. You call Jacksonville Jacksonville. All I know about the Dolphins are Dan Marino used to be their fucking quarterback, and, and, it, and once in the 90s, they had their mascot, um, Dolphin, stolen by a, a police detective who used that's, to be a man. That's that's fake. Uh, are that's, you sure? Yeah, that's Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Oh. The first one. I, w- I, I was always wondering why Jim Carrey was so involved in... Yeah, yeah, no, that was oh. fake. That was, that was not a documentary. Oh. Yeah. yeah well, Dan Marino uh, was the, still the, the quarterback, though, right? Yes, yes. Isotoners? Uh, what? The gloves. Isotoner gloves. I, I don't know what those are. Oh, never mind. You ruined it. But, um, they also had an awesome... They also had an awesome, uh... Fight song. It's the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins. And it goes dumb like that. It was probably from the 50s. Yeah, that sounds like something that would have been done like early on. Yeah. Um, Nick, like I, I have goals for next year, and one of them is to check out the indie room and try and network a bit. Um, and also, and, and I talked about it at fr- when I went to too many games. I'm going to talk about it again. There's this game I really want to do. You're a spaceship bridge simulator. And each person has their own different tasks. One person's a captain, one's a communications, one's uh, the pilot, one's weaponry. It's a Star Trek game, right? It's not Star Trek, but it's Star Trek. Are you sure? Because there's literally a VR Star Trek game it that is, is that. No, it's not VR. Oh. This is like a simulator. Like I do remember I, that from too many games. It yeah. was like in that hallway off to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It, you were there this year. Yeah, right? You want the, you want uh, Yeah, I was just there the one day. Yeah. But it was like the day you weren't there, I yeah. think. Yeah, so, yeah, you had, I gave you my badge. Or, right, I mean, yeah. you had a badge. <laughs> no, you you had picked up badges. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah. I was just No, no, I was trying to remember how it went. I'm just saying we didn't share badges. That's We're not privileged. F- it's fine. But, yeah, yeah, they had it hidden in the back room, and one of these, I mean, we had, we had a room of six. We could have done it with the room. It's just, we would have to coordinate with the room and then go and book the time 
and make sure we're all available to do it at that time. Yeah. So it, it'd be pretty fun to figure that out, though. It would be. Are you going to too many games again this year? Uh, if it doesn't yeah, fall should. during Firefly? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Probably not. It's usually the weekend after. I know you're usually in that spot where like you can't always like afford to go. Well, no, I can afford to go to too many games because we are privileged. But I just don't go the entire weekend. I just go for one day because honestly, you don't really need to do too many games an entire weekend yes. unless you get the like the leveled up passes. Yeah, it is the following week. Yeah, too. it always uh, is. Firefly is the fifteenth to the eighteenth, and too many games is the twenty third to the twenty fifth. Yeah, y'all yeah, probably try and go again this year for like the Saturday or whatever. Yeah, I'll, de- I'll, I'll most likely be there. Yeah, I'm sure it's actually better if... Because it, it was kind of boring, like, being just by myself wandering around, because there's only so much you can do. Yeah. Like, it's not a... It, it's the, cool, but at the same time, it's one of those, like... After a couple of hours of, like, walking around and checking out booths and all, like... Yeah, there's... I mean, there's not really much you can do. The concerts are neat, but this year... And it's, and it's not that I don't like the music. It's not that it was bad. It's... I don't know the band, so I'm not all that, like... Ooh, overhyped about them. And I've done that where I've gone and just hung out in the concert halls, but bands aren't as good as they were three years ago. Like, a lot of the bands that are playing now are not nearly as good as bands that they were doing three years ago. Well, and I mean, a lot of the bands that, like, like were probably there a few years ago are now, like, touring further to, like, the bigger things. Like, yeah. They're going to MAGFest. They're going to PAX. Yeah. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then you you have like bands like the X Hunters where like they are now playing their own music again. Yeah, they're, so. and the only reason that they're I mean they're not not doing the X Hunters it's just they're putting it kind of yeah. backwards. It's it's the same band just a different name because they want to be able to do their own creative stuff yeah. rather than just do covers. I mean most of those guys is like they've been in a band together like some of them for like over a decade. Yeah, like <laughs> like Demarco has been in bands since like 2002 yeah like, so, so so yeah they they've been all over, they, like it it's reasonable for them to do their own thing uh but yeah so magfest is a good time and i suggest people to go to it next year hopefully hopefully they get that they fucked up uh registration um i'll have to keep an eye out for it come otakon because everybody knows that like, go on salad otakon that's just a call back to a an argument that i had with people this oh. year. um <laughs> But I'll have to keep an eye out for it for when they come out, and I guess I'll have to make sure to have the sixty-five dollars prior to because the day they went on sale, they pumped up ten bucks, which is nuts. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a convention. They're not supposed to go up that fast, that high. Yes, I but, mean, I mean, I'm used to this point. Like a lot of conventions are just overpriced to get into them now. Yeah, but like to for the price to go up like that just yeah. seems. I mean, sixty-five bucks for for Magfest isn't too bad. But if I had to pay what people pay at door, which is like eighty five, ninety bucks, that's that's well, that's like um, New York Comic Con for the weekend is over a hundred. Yeah, like that's 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 too much. Like, what are you doing at Comic? You're walking around spending more money. At least at Magfest, you you don't have to spend any money while you're there. Well, I'm going to a lot of panels and stuff too. Yeah, like I go to the panels, I wander around the artist room, so I don't I don't end up spending that much money. Yeah, but, but it's a lot of that comes down to like I'm not staying in New York and I don't feel like lugging shit around until I get back on the train to go back home. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was that was that. That was that. And then my friend's wedding. Um, congratulations again, Sean. I uh, I think he listens sometimes. Man, he doesn't listen. He does. He's told me he listens. And you know what? If he listens, he should write an email. I, I I we I say that every time we we bring him up. And he never does. Yeah, that's why I don't believe he listens. But he's on his honeymoon now, so he probably oh, good won't for listen until, for like two weeks. I booked my honeymoon this week. Yeah, I saw that. Congratulations. Uh, what did Erica post on Facebook? Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, she's been super active on Facebook lately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's cool. We're, we we have seven days, technically, I guess, at Disney. Nice. But one, at least one of them is going to be going to Universal, which is way more fucking expensive than I realized. Oh. Oh, Universal's expensive as hell. Yeah, it is. Like, holy shit. That's why shit. usually when people go, they do one or the other. They don't do both. Well, we just want to go one day for Universal to do the Harry Potter parks. Yeah. Like, that's it. We literally, we're going to... And But but here's here's why it's expensive. You had to get park hopper passes to do that. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's expensive. Yeah. No, I know why it's expensive. I'm just saying, like, holy shit, I didn't realize how expensive Universal yeah. would be. Yeah. Yeah, because we could have just 
done one. We could have just gone to like Hogsmeade or just Diagon Alley. Yeah. But then we wouldn't get to ride the Hogwarts Express. Yeah, and that's half the yeah, half the thing. Exactly. It's, that's half of Hogwarts is that's yeah. half of Harry Potter World is the Express. Yeah. Because so, it's half a park in two parks. Yeah, so what we're gonna end up doing is probably like midweek go over there. Yeah. And we'll uh you can rent cars right you know, on the Disney property. Yeah. So we're just gonna like rent a car for a day and you know drive what? over there. Before you did you rent the car yet? No, 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 no. Wait until that day. Check Uber first. I'm going to. So I was looking online, and I have to do some more research on this. Apparently, um, they ticket Uber drivers for picking people up there. Really? Yeah. And I don't know if it's like specific locations they get ticketed or just across the board. There might It might be. Yeah. Do more research because yeah. Eric took an Uber when they went this year. Oh, did he? I'm going to have to ask him about it. The, he had to go uh, go to the supermarket or something, pick up something for the baby. He took an Uber. Okay. So, that's good to know because I, when we were like looking at like everything, like booking it, I just did like a quick Google search and I read the thing because I was just seeing if Uber actually like was active enough down there to rely yeah. on it. And I saw one person say, "Yeah, like Disney stat or Disney like police or whatever are ticketing Uber drivers now." And I'm just like, <laughs> That's- "That that seems a little harsh." And I don't know how true that is, but at yeah. the same time, if they're picking up from like undesignated locations, I can see that happening. Yeah, it would be one like Disney's a big park, so if they're just picking them up off the side of the road, that's one thing. But if they're like going and picking them up at the resorts and whatnot, you can't really do anything about that if it's a designated. That's what area. I mean. Like if it, it's if it's like an actual parking lot, they can't say you can't park here. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like if it's if it's like at a resort, that seems way more reasonable. Like if it's at a park and you're picking people up, like I can see that because like the parks are a little weirder when it yeah. comes to like all that stuff. Yeah, but. Yeah, I'll have to ask Eric to see exactly, yeah. like... It, ask him about that. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure they stayed at Disney, so I'm... Yeah, I, I he, think I heard he took an Uber. At worst case scenario, he might have had to take an Uber from downtown Disney. Yeah. So go to downtown Disney, grab an Uber. Yeah, I mean, it's not too... So I, it'll depend how much, like, it's going to cost, too. Yeah. Um, Because it's only 60 bucks to rent a car for a day. Okay. Um, But you also have to make sure the gas is the right thing and this and that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I mean, like... It's it's not a it's not a long drive from the Disney parks to Universal. Yeah, I think it's like a half hour or something like that. Uber would probably cost you about fifteen twenty bucks. Oh, is that all? Yeah. Okay. I took I took an Uber from the Gaylord to Union. As long as it's not surge pricing. Yeah. I took an Uber from the Gaylord to uh, Union Station in DC. I think it was about a twenty five minute drive. It cost me sixteen bucks. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. No, Uber's great, I, and I'm not just saying this because I drive for Uber. Uber's great. Uber is sometimes. A great, <laughs> sometimes. No, yeah, like I, I've used Uber like a couple of times, so and like I've never had a problem with it. Yeah, um, it would. It's just one of those like when I'm outside of like if I'm in a city, I expect to be able to use Uber and not have an issue. I wasn't sure how like yeah common it was like down there. Like it makes sense for it to be like around there, but like if you're at Disney, they have all the free transportation to get to all the parks. Yeah. So I didn't know if people actually like would come out to the parks to pick people up. Uh-huh. It's, but I mean, because not people don't always stay on the park. Yeah, exactly. That's why it was one of those like I wanted to look into it. Like I wasn't going to book a car until like probably the week before if we needed to do that. Yeah, just because at that point we'll have a little bit better of an idea of what yeah. day we want to go to Universal. Yeah, because right now we just we booked Saturday to Saturday, and we got six days worth of tickets. Yeah, so like obviously we're not going any any place on the last Saturday. And we're not planning on going any, anywhere the first Saturday. We'll probably go to like downtown Disney and just yeah, yeah. relax and everything. That's going to be the day that you relax. Yeah, so like we're we're getting down there like early afternoon, like around like one or two. Yeah, so you're going to get there. You're going to get to your room if it's even available. You're going to drop your shit off. You're going to bang because you guys just got married. So you're going to do that, and then um, and then you're going to fall asleep because you're going to be still exhausted from the day before, and you would have just banged. And then you're going to go to downtown Disney. Yeah, and get, like, dinner or something. I really want to go to T-Rex Cafe. Yeah, place so. is awesome. <laughs> place is awesome. Yeah, did, I don't know if you knew this. and So, they let, like, Disney has, like, a whole, like, you can do a honeymoon registry, like, for your wedding, basically. Like, your wedding registry can be for your honeymoon. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, where, like, you go through and they get they have all the different shit you can, like, sign up for. Yeah. To have people, like, mm-hmm. buy you as gifts. You can, like, my friends that they went, I, because of the snowstorm on Saturday... I my train arrived back about twenty minutes late. Sounds about right. The first 
train that I needed to get on in PA, in Philly, on the blue line, never showed up. So I had to wait 20 minutes or a half hour for the next one. And no, I wasn't late because according to my phone, it should have showed up and everybody was on the platform still. So it's not like it was, it never, it, it, I wasn't late. It was. Yeah. So it took me, I didn't get back to my parents until about 3.30. And then I had to get back here by 4, get a shower, get dressed, and then go to the wedding, which was at 5, all in the snow, which the wedding was at Valley Brook. But I didn't have time to stop somewhere to get a card and put a cash or a check or whatever in there. So I was telling my one buddy, he's like, find out what hotel they're staying at and book them a couple's massage and send them a text or whatever. Like, hey, I booked you this. So yeah, you can do that with anywhere. Well, no. So I know you can do stuff like that, but literally like Disney has a whole website set up specifically to do this. Yeah. Like you go, you sign up. Like I could give you like the generic website and you could just search for us on there. Or they give you like a dedicated link that takes you right to your list. I'm just going to set up my own honeymoon by myself <laughs> and have people pay for my Disney well, trip. Because it's awesome. Because like you have like, say, I, I don't know how this would end up even working because we didn't even sign up for it. But like you can have people pay for rooms, like like pay for nights of your room. Yeah. Um, you can have people pay for meals. Yeah. Like well, it's, we did the meal plan, the way, so that doesn't help us at all. But I guess the way you could put it's. It's kind of like a GoFundMe trip thing, but for your honeymoon. Yeah, so like they have like the basic stuff, like you can have people pay for like the really fancy meals and like the sh- like the show meals and shit like that. Yeah, but then they have like um like one of like the sc- like the two scuba diving things that you can do, where like like swimming through like reefs and all that stuff, or like playing with dolphins, or um the Disney behind the scenes tour. Yeah, like the people can buy that for you and that's pretty sweet yeah like there's a bunch of like cool stuff like that like like the like excursions essentially that you can do at disney that cost extra money yeah like you can add them to just this this list and if people want to get you that they can get you it and you can put like how many you want of each thing so like some things are per person so you would mark two other things are just you know both of us can go to that one thing so you just mark it for one but then you can also do um just essentially gift cards like you can literally put on there like just a dollar amount and how many of those dollar amounts like would be cool. So we put like twenty five dollars and put it at like eight or ten or something like that. Yeah. So this way if people just like either they don't have a lot or they don't know what to, to do, they can just be like, here's twenty five bucks to spend while you're down there. Yeah. Like buy a souvenir, get get dinner on one of the nights because technically I think we're we're kinda we're on our own for I think one meal. Yeah, meal plans they don't always cover everything. So exactly. yeah, you're gonna have like you're gonna have like a small meal or something like if you can plan it out perfectly, but it'll never actually run well, that perfect. There is literally one. We're we're short one day for eating, I believe. Yeah, because like technically the Universal Day doesn't count because we're going to be at Universal anyway. Yeah, but like because we have six days at Disney parks. Yeah, but we're there for like seven and a half. So your Saturday to Saturday, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it's like the 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 last Saturday doesn't count though because we're leaving. F- like early ish like yeah. we're out of there by like 11 yeah so like that we we don't need meals on that day either and we're o- like we're only going to be there for like dinner on the first saturday so we'll probably just pay for that one yeah yeah um but you know what before we uh talk anymore let's take a quick break all right break bing 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 We're back, everybody. Yeah, we're back. Um, so, uh, Magfest in the past. Magfest was good. Uh, it's done. We talked about it. Anything else you particularly um, want to talk about? Uh, I was just saying to you during the break, um, I started listening to that new podcast that actually just ended, so that's why I started listening to it. It's only 10 episodes long. It's called uh, Life After, and it's about a gentleman who uh, lost his wife about eight months prior to the podcast. And um, he's having trouble coping, and then starts hearing her voice on, like, uh, uh, on a on an app. Like, there's an app. It's a social media app where you could talk into it. So it's kind of like Twitter, but it's your voice. So it's kind of, I guess you could say, it's Snapchat, but your voice. Okay. And it keeps everything though. And so he he kept using that to replay things that she said in the past, and then she starts actually talking to him from the afterlife, and then it just it just plays out from there. And it's, I'm uh, halfway through, I was, let's see, what chapter am I? It's, 
I just got, I'm like midway through episode six and it's, uh, each episode is about 25 minutes, a half hour long. So it's not too long. And like, it's the way it plays out is really interesting. Like you, when you, it, it does, it, it, it goes one way and then it goes a completely different direction. And now it's an investigative thing of how this is going on. And it's really cool. I, I would suggest listening to it. If you have time, if you have five hours, if you have a long drive or <laughs> like what not. It's a, it's a shame. Like I've, I think I have like 38 podcasts backed up on my phone right now. Oh yeah. Just because like that break between Christmas and New Year, um, Giant Bomb, who I listen to the most stuff from, does their Game of the Year stuff. Yeah. So it's like a three hour podcast every day for the whole week. Jesus. Um, because they do a bunch of Game of the Year like deliberation stuff where like, every day they have three different categories and they it's it's basically they record them like their internal discussion about what game should win and release yeah. them as podcasts. Yeah. But they it ends up being close to three hours a day, I think. Yeah. I um I've been struggling with podcasts just because work has been ridiculous with phone calls. So I haven't been able to just sit there and listen to podcasts all day. And I was listening to a lot of podcasts. I was listening to Nerdist. I was listening to, or I was trying to catch up on uh, Nerd Poker. I was listening to Nerdist, listening to Pete Holmes, which is the hardest one to listen to. Not because it's bad, because it's two and a half, three hours long. Some, it, it's anywhere between an hour and 45 minutes to three hours long. Sometimes it's boring. Sometimes it's not. It's a 50-50 with that. Pete Holmes is hilarious, but sometimes some of, some of the people he talks to aren't really that great. Yeah, which happens. Um, yeah. I was I had like seven or eight, maybe nine podcasts, and because work started like getting busy with the phone calls, I wasn't able to listen to them constantly, and I fell back. and I have podcast, I have Pete Holmes podcast from back in October. I haven't listened to yet. Wow! So I'm gonna probably not listen to them all and just go one by one and restart this week. But I finally caught up on all my Nerdist. I caught up on all my Star Talk because Star Talk started coming out twice a week. So I like that was setting me back. I'm caught up on everything now, except for TED Talk. I haven't really listened to TED Talk in a while, but they tend to repeat a lot of stuff because yeah. TED conferences only happen every so often. Yeah, and I, I've got 39 podcasts currently downloaded. Yeah. So, but yeah, the the life after it's by the same people who did that one. The message that I talked about last year or early last year, I don't remember when. About uh, they got they received the message from space and they tried to decode it, but. Everybody that tries to decode it has died. And so, like, that was a quick one. That was, like, no more than two hours altogether for the eight episodes. So they stepped up their game time-wise a little bit. <laughs> but it's it's really, really neat listen. If you're into, like, the audiobook stuff, this is something you should check out. Um, but besides that, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XV. As have I. Yeah, I'm that's, trying to... Other, try- than, other than Animal Crossing New Leaf, that's the only game I've played. I I haven't really played a lot of uh, Pokemans because um, I'm trying to breeze through 15 before the update for 14 comes out, which I think is actually out this week, maybe so, next week. So how many hours do you have in 15 right now? 30 like, something. Bo- okay. 30, maybe 40. I'm not too and sure. And how many, Um, what level are you? I'm 50. 50 on the dot. Okay. But I've been banking experience for a couple of hours now. I'm at 160 with Noctis. 170 with Noctis? It's 170,000. Yeah. With Noctis. Um, how much How much guild do you have? I have enough to go to Golden Key. Don't. I know. Because there's there's a place that does three times. Yeah, and you're almost there. So, um... But I want I, I want to finish everything before I can't go back. And okay, so he, here's the thing. You can go back. That's a lie. Um, and this isn't a spoiler. Like, very quickly after you... The, and the game does this a few times, where it says, like, you can't go back after this point. They really just mean that, like, it's going to be a little bit before the game opens well, yeah, up yeah. again. So, you're actually good. Like, you can move on, and within, say, an hour, be able to travel back yeah. again. Because um, you go to... You, you know where you're going, right? No, I'm going to La Salle, right? Or... Lestalem's a city. You know, I'm going to... You're going going to Altitia. Altitia, Altitia, yeah. Um, So once you're there, um, very quickly upon arriving, you get the ability to... um, I forget how the game puts it. It's a really stupid... To relive past memories. Okay. Which basically just means you get to go back to um, Lucis and, like, literally do your old quests and stuff. Yeah. Which is what I did. I'm on chapter... I'm on that infamous chapter 13. 
Interview. I've been on that for over a week now. Um, is, it, is it a hard chapter or is it just? All right. So it's it's very different. They take okay. a, and this was all this. Everyone knows about this like ahead of time, so it's not really a spoiler. Um, they you lose all your weapons in it. Really? Yeah. So you have no weapons and you're you're alone as Noctis for the majority of it. Okay. So they give you a different weapon that's really cool. Um, and I personally liked the the thing a lot. It's I can see people disliking it if they went in and they're like at the recommended level. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm 46 and I have like almost 200,000 experience saved up. Okay, a little over 200,000. Um, I actually the last time I played, I went to the hotel that gives you the three times, saved right before it, and then used the experience to see what level it put me at. Yeah, and I was almost level 70. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I I know there's a three times, and because I saw online there's a guy who's like here's a quick way to get 3 million experience in an hour and if you do this at level 50 it'll bring you to 99 or really close to it and I was like alright let me check it out I was like alright you need these items to increase experience you need to eat this food to increase experience and you need to fight these weak ass level 20 enemies that you can kill in one hit and you need to do that for an hour and a half I'm like you know what fuck that I have an experience ring I'm just gonna bank experience yeah that's basically what I did um and not really on purpose um I just, I was, so chapter 13 was, I'm almost through it. Yeah. I'm at the end of it. Literally, I, I'm pr- pretty sure that the next thing I do is going to be a boss fight. Yeah. And then I'll move on to the next chapter. Um, yeah. That just seems to be where it's at. For all the people that bitched about 13, I actually, I, that's probably one of my favorite chapters so far. People are saying like there's no story in it. There's more story in that chapter than there's been in any other part of this fucking game. Well, I hear a lot of people bitching about certain things. Like I just got past the point where Gladio leaves you. For no reason. For like an hour. For for a chapter. Yeah. He left you, and then he comes back. Yeah. And it, he, they make it seem like... They make it seem like it's not supposed to be him, but you already know it's him. It's re- It was really dumb. But I see people complaining that the DLC is going to be that part. And I'm like, well, that... It, it's, it's a side stuff. It's a side story about something Gladio was doing. Yeah. But it's main story content. No, it's not. You don't need to know what he's doing. Like, um... Yeah, so I think I think the DLC, there's going to be stuff for each of the main characters. Yeah. And it, apparent, I guess each the, I guess each of the main characters branches off at one point or another. I don't know. So, but, Agnes... So, I technically, at one point, lost, um... I can't remember his name. Prompto? Yeah, there you go. Um, I, I was seriously getting him comp- confused with Poplio. Pop... The Pokemon? Okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, you, I technically lost Prompto for a little bit, so I don't know if that'll be his side of it. Um, but I haven't lost Ignis at all yet that I can remember. Yeah, it's. I mean, I don't know for sure. I, 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 there's I've still more games. There's too, still so. what, what is there? Sixteen chapters or something like that. Fifteen, I think. Fifteen. Um, but I'm just like from secondhand accounts. Uh, Evan hated it because of the DLC factor. I don't really like Evan's opinion and on those things. So. Shahed loved it, but Evan trashed the game to Shahed to make Shahed hate it now because that's how Shahed is. Um but apparently it was one of the that was one of the things is like a character leaves and then it comes back to the party and they're adding DLC for and that's important information. I'm like it's not really important yeah, information. No, it, like like people bitch like, like the the game lacks a story. It it does. But there is a story there, but yeah. it doesn't have as much narrative as you're used to in Final Fantasies. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a lot of implied story. It's like, it's, all right, you're going to meet his, see his wife. So the biggest problem is that a lot of the story, if you didn't watch the like the movies and the anime, you miss out on a lot of it. And, and that's kind of why I'm not watching it, so I can have a perspective aside, like a, a perspective away from like what you and Eric have. Yeah. So this way, I can. I can base the movie, or not the movie, the game on the game. Yeah, like, I didn't watch Kingsclave, so I didn't watch that, but I did watch Brotherhood, which doesn't really, it doesn't have anything to do with the, the story of the game. It just fleshes out those characters a little bit early on for you so that you don't hate them. Yeah. Basically, because, like, when I first started the game, I'm just like, I don't like any of these people. Like, they all suck pretty hard. I don't, and I don't hate any of them. I like them all. I, mean, I didn't hate them. They just weren't, like, I didn't find them interesting or worthwhile. Yeah. And like some like some they got annoying at times with like the dialogue which like 
I see what like they were trying to do with the game because it's like so open. They try to have like stuff just happen yeah. like naturally. But once you hear the same thing like a thousand times, yeah. it's not anymore. And, and honestly, one thing they could have done with that is just made the car drive a little bit faster. Well, that's one of the upgrades. I know. I just got that upgrade, and it helps. But still, so you said you got the you did the the illustrious regalia. I got quest, the illustrious regalia. The, the headlights. So I have the headlights, dude. I have to go back into that dungeon. I was gonna say so that dun- the the headlights are in that dungeon. Yeah. All right. Because I tried doing it, and I am level forty six, and it's a level forty six quest. Yeah. And I I went went in there and just immediately got fucking oh, wrecked. It's hard in there. That dungeon's hard. Um, and the f- the first boss you come up to is in such a small enclosed space, really annoying. And honestly, Ignis doesn't scan fast enough for me, so I started playing in wait mode again. Because Ignis doesn't scan enough for me. I don't I don't ever use scan. I I I make sure to use Libra. Wait mode is baby mode. No, it's you figure it's not really baby mode. I it's mean, baby mode. I I, <laughs> I I I scan the enemies that I don't know so I can figure out how to kill them faster and then I I'm not waiting you know how you the kill rest them of the time. You fucking you, you you warp strike them, and then you just beat the shit out of them until they're dead. Yeah, where you use weapons that are stronger against them, and it'll kill them faster than that. Like one of um one of Ignis's moves is to scan. You just yeah, and he doesn't do it often enough. No, like literally, like it's one of his abilities. Like you have to set it. No, it's supposed to be he does it on he, his own. No, he has that too, but one of his actual like usable abilities involves scanning the enemy. Well, and that's dumb because then that means I have to get rid of regroup. Exactly. Which, I mean, it, it also I, I was trying to level up other abilities as, at this time because each one has an increase in level. I started leveling up Prompto's snapshot. But I was like, you know what? Maybe I should get the ability to get AP every time he uses it. So that it's actually worthwhile using. Yeah, I mean, I, the the only I I don't use most of that stuff. So like, I have um, Prompto is still on his piercer or whatever it is, and I must never use him for anything anyway. His his uh, star shot, I believe it's called, is awesome. Is that the distracting one? It distracts and it makes you stronger against demons. So I just I left him with piercer because I generally don't use it. I usually bank it. F- I usually bank my um, bar for regroup. Yeah. Um. So this way, like, I'm never in a situation where people are almost dead and I can't just quickly do Ignis's regroup and be good. Yeah. Because, um, you know the, uh, when the, the Imperial, like, drop ships come yeah. and fall on you? I'm fine. I'm at the level now and, you're, like, you're just past it, too, where you can easily take those guys down now. I could always take them down, no problem. Oh, see, I was getting a lot of ones where they were dropping level 47s when I was level 12. Oh, uh, I, I, well, I was never, I never got something that hard. No, they yeah. were always... No, I in the, my level. If it, if they were, if it was the large group, like where like twenty of them fell, they were always at my level. But when, I leveled up really fast. I mean, so did I. It's just I I put that in experience on because I didn't want to level up, and then the next thing I knew, I had a hundred thousand experience. I'm like, I'm just gonna keep going. Let's see how much yeah. I can get. That's that's what happened with me. I put the experience on, and I, it was I was banking. I think I'd banked uh, seventy, eighty thousand experience, yeah. and that brought me from forty-two to fifty to fifty. Yeah, the downside is I'm at a point where I don't think there are any other quests that are yeah. like at a higher level where I'm like I don't know if I can do these. Um, yeah, my issue right now, the reason I haven't left uh, Lestalem or not Lestalem, Lucius is um, there's two because I looked it up because I I was under the impression you couldn't go back. There's two. Uh, royal weapons i haven't gotten yet one is in you you get spoon fed the location of it but it's not there it's where the demons had raided the place and taken the weapon right yeah i did find that you have to go to the tower which is dino's last quest is that a level 55 quest it's like it's like a level 57 quest so i have one from him that it says it's level 55 and he when I talked to him, he said basically like this is this is it. This is yeah, the one that lets him be, be a full time jeweler. That'll be his last quest. You have to go there at night, get to the top or the end of it, kill the demon that's there, and you'll get that weapon. I so I haven't gotten that weapon. I that's I'm like I kind of want to level up just so I can go get yeah. this weapon. Well, there's all you get another weapon once you leave there too. Like the like um after Altissia, one of the like next chapters involves you doing another dungeon for a weapon. Yeah, there's only. Um, if I, there's only nine weapons in Lucius, I believe. I think I, I might have, there's, there's there's eight or nine weapons in Lucius. Maybe there's 10, but there's not 
like some of them are story quests after Lucius. Like there's not they're not all at Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I was just letting you know just I didn't when you said you had two left, I didn't know if you had actually looked stuff up yeah, or I, if you just knew that like, oh, there's thirteen weapons and I I have eleven. So. I looked up tomb locations and there's two left. And one of them is the one that's the broken in tomb. Another one is in the desert that I didn't even know was there because I didn't look around. Like I didn't explore at all. That's the biggest problem. Is I didn't explore. Does the um does that does the one where you get the headlights is that a dungeon that has a weapon? No, okay. I don't think so. I but didn't there's think so stuff, either. So there's stuff in that dungeon. I don't think there's like yeah. A, I want to go do it. I'm just at level forty six. It's not oh, fun. It's so it's a hard dungeon because it's it's all demons and they're all high level demons forties forties and fifties. Uh, excuse me, a lot of them are like the flans and the blobs, so they are resistant to everything except for light damage, and I don't know how to get light damage yet. Oh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if this can... Do you mean holy damage, right? I guess so, yeah. Um, Actually, that weapon I was talking about, that's actually kind of cool that you get in Chapter 13, it does light damage. It's okay. got three different like abilities. It's got like an instant death... Um, That's not instant. You have to hold your... You have to hold the button for it for like yeah. a while... And not all enemies are susceptible to it. Okay. So sometimes it, it eats away your magic, too. So sometimes you'll hold it, and it'll eat up all your magic, and the thing won't die. Okay. And then you're just fucked. But it turns your dodge into a attack. So if you dodge something, you also attack them with holy magic. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Because it, like that whole section is kind of like a stealth section. But occasionally you get caught by the guys and you have to fight them anyway. Yeah. And that's just a way easier way to fight. You wait for them to swing because they're slow. And you just block and it fucking hits them with holy magic. You hit them like four or five times, they're dead. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's there's, uh, there's there's those, there's liches, there's yojimbos that can kill you in one hit if they hit you with a specific ability. Yep. Which it, is the same as a Corel's. That's what I... Um, if the Corel's hit you with their whisker, they can kill you in one hit. It sucks. Yep. Well, they don't... Does it kill you or just put you down into that, like... It you, kills you. Oh, wow. I haven't had that yeah. happen. If it, they have to... Like, if they hit you with a whisker, it's one thing. If they hit you with a specific spot with the whisker, it kills you. It brings... I And I swear, I was keeping an eye on his health. Prompto died about four times. Prompto I think sucks. I died about twice <laughs> fighting, like, two Corels. Um, have, have you, um... I forget what I was going to say. Have you had much luck getting summons to show up? Uh, Once. Well, besides the time they make you summon uh, Ramu, I was able to summon Ramu one more time. Wow. And he used Judgment Bolt. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's what he does every time. Uh, apparently, Titan has two abilities, so I figured oh. they each did. Well, Titan so- can either punch down or he can throw, because I looked up how to use the summons, and it's, oh, it's kind of just random, uh, like, Ramu shows up if the fight is lasting too long or something. Yeah, if, if the fight goes on for a while, Ramu shows up. Titan is apparently the hardest. Yeah, like you have to be in like a big, wide open area. Yeah, and it's generally like it's basically like in um the the middle area of Lucis is where like he's most likely to show up. Yeah. But you also essentially have to have all the other guys dead. Yeah, that's right. So he's just hard to show up. Um, what is it, Leviathan? And yeah, no, just Leviathan, which you haven't gotten yet. No, yeah. Um, that one is it. The the more you're in danger. So, like, like where you just don't have any HP and you have to heal yourself, the more likely Leviathan is to show up. And Shiva is apparently just, like, a mixture of all of them. Yeah. I haven't gotten Shiva to show up yet. But I've, I have, I, Rama, I've gotten to show up tons of times. I, I hate that. Like, I mean, I understand it, but they should have made it different. Yeah. I actually, I think it's cool because every once in a while when it happens, it's like, oh, the, this fight's over and I hold the button yeah. and it fucking ends it. Like, uh, it. I was able, I was in the sewers getting the illustrious, getting the, the headlights, and it was like, summon Ramu, and I'm like, I, I just started this fight, it's not lasting long at all, I just started it, alright, and he throws it, and it goes through the ground into the dungeon. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I was, it was one, of, it was in Lucius in the desert, where the base is, I was on my way, do, I was doing the quest to kill... I was doing the cup noodle quest, and I went and fought a behemoth for that quest instead yeah. of anything else, because I don't know what you did for yours. I, I picked meat, so I it was behemoth. Meat, so I went and fought the behemoth. But that was right next to that um, that base, yeah. that empire base, that they set you up with a little side quest for that, too. I went and did that, went in there and did that side quest, and that was the one where they just kept spoon-feeding you enemies and kept feeding them and feeding them. The last fight, 
I was fighting those two goddamn robots. I don't. E- I can't even tell you how long. He didn't even fucking show up. <laughs> I was like, I could have used. But no, I have one fucking Yojimbo that I've been fighting for a minute, and you you throw your fucking spear or your your, your staff. But I was fighting these two goddamn giant robots that were kicking my ass. Well, I think it's neat because it's they aren't really like. Like, in, in every other game, it's kind of been like a, like, you can just summon them at will. Yeah. But in this, it's like, no, you basically, like, convince them that they are they are willing to help you on their terms. Yeah, they're the god. They're gods. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're the six. Dude, they, they keep... Shiva's the coolest, though. Is she? Yeah. Have you seen it, or... I, I so I accidentally had spoiled, like, the whole Shiva thing. Okay. Um... Literally because I think it was IGN had a video on Facebook that autoplayed. Okay. Like a bunch of fucking douchebags. Yeah. Um, so I found out, like, basically where Shiva comes from. And she's she's part of story, right, to get her? Yeah. All, I think I all, know, all of them are. I know Ifrit. There's Ifrit and one other that uh, you haven't even mentioned yet. Oh, I didn't know. I Titan, was... Titan, Ramu, Leviathan, Shiva. There's six. Ifrit and one other. But... There's also Bahamut. Yeah, so I but guess it's Bahamut Ifrit. is... Um, Bahamut, you don't get. Yeah, Bahamut is only in like the end of the uh, game. Yeah, and Efrit, I don't know how to get Efrit. You, I'm thinking you might have to go back to the uh, to the volcano to get Efrit, but I'm not sure. I, I don't. I haven't read it yet. I haven't read through. I, I'm trying not to like spoil too much, but I keep like getting these random things that'll spoil it a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's. I really, I'm having so much fun with 15. I kind of wish I was playing it right now. Uh, I just got like I, said, I got those those headlights. I, I'm gonna go fishing for that damn cat's food. Uh, see, uh, I just bought the cat's food because fishing sucks so like hard. I don't spending twenty thousand gil. I had the gil to spend, so you know what? I don't mind fishing. Well, I, I've I've been fishing a lot because I I want to get the level ten for it. Yeah, Prompto's level ten. Ignis and Gladio are both like level eight. Yeah. But Noctis is like level four for fishing. I'm level seven across the board. Prompto's eight. Um, seven for everybody else. I spent. Um, I spent. I if if I'm out at night and there's no camp nearby and there's a fishing spot, I'll fish until daytime. I'd much prefer traveling in the daytime. So if there's a fishing spot nearby, I'll fish until daytime or until I clear the the lake, the well, river. So what I started doing was, um, you can do, if, if you bring up the map at any time, you can return to the last rest point. Yeah. And it's no cost. Same thing with your car. You can just return to the car wherever it's at. Yeah. So what I've been doing is I rest at a camp, like, regardless of where it's at, and then, like, I just do what I need to do. I, I also, I have the two things turned on for gain AP while driving and gain experience yeah. while driving. So I don't fast travel anywhere. So my, I haven't done the experience one yet. I have the AP. It's only 10 experience and one AP, but it's pretty frequent. Yeah. So like I just travel like the long way to everything now. I've been fast traveling a lot lately because I'm just... I, I If I look at my hours, say I'm at 40 hours, at least 10 of it is driving. Yeah, I'm just over 50 hours, I think. Uh, and I'm like, you know what? This is, that, this is a little frustrating. Like, yes, it's my own choice. Because I want the AP, but still, I'm like, I'm like, I mean, and honestly, most of the traveling I do isn't that much longer than what the fucking loading time takes. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's and it's one of those I do. It, I make sure it's always during the day because after I think chapter three, you can just drive at night or something it's, like that. Once you reach a certain level, I was chapter three, but I was level fifty, and so the, he was like, "You, we, I'll drive at night." It's it said. Ignis thinks you're powerful enough to drive at night. Well, no, it's literally it's not it's not level based. It's actually like story based. Once you hit a certain point in the story, if you go to to drive the car at night, he's just willing to drive. Uh, and mine, because some people were saying it was chapter five. Mine was chapter three. A hundred percent. I swear to God, it was chapter three. Yeah, no, mine was, was mine was chapter and, three also. And I wasn't and, I wasn't doing story stuff. Yeah, I, I had to go to Lestalem for the longest time, and I never did. And eventually, I just stayed at Golden Key, and. And then leveled up, and I went... And but yeah, because I was not that high. Of, I'm not level 50 yet, either. Yeah. So... It might be whatever. It might be like 42. Uh, might be 40. Who knows? Because the thing is, the Iron Giant... The Red Giants are level 45. Yeah. And so that's why they don't want you driving at night. It's because you can kill an Iron Giant. They're only 30. But a Red Giant, when you're less than level 40, 
could take. I fought a red giant once that took me all night. It was I just daytime. Don't fight them. <laughs> it was daytime. I had to fight him because he was in my way, and I couldn't get my car. I had that once. I just I ran backwards and then just called um, the tow truck to bring the car to me. I was stubborn. I was like, I'm moving forward, and I fought the thing. It was probably only like a ten minute fight, but it was morning. And the sun was out, and he was still fighting me because I was still engaged. It, I used up all my potions. Wow. I used everything. Well, not everything, but I used most of my stuff. I was, I was determined at that point. I was like, I'm killing this fucker. And he's one of the... He's a, the Red Giants are another one of those things that resistant to everything except for Holy. Yeah. But, yeah, so what I end up doing is I have the... I, I camp every time because I'm, I'm not worried about experience right now anyway. Yeah. So that helps me get the boost for Ignis going up. Yeah. But I'll just basically, wherever I'm at, once nighttime hits, if I don't have something I can do at night, I just do return to rest point. It takes me to that camping spot. I do that. And then when I wake up, I just return to car. Yeah. And yeah, it saves me all that trouble. Yeah. So this way, like, I keep getting the points for camping. And like, I basically just stop and fish wherever I come to a dock. When it comes to camping, don't you only get AP? Every time you set up a new camp. So if you return to your camping spot, isn't it already set up? Yeah, so I'm not worried about so the So you're AP, not though. getting AP there. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about... Um, That's two AP. I get three. I haven't upgraded it further. But again, like I get so much AP for driving that it's not that big yeah, of a deal. Yeah, it's... And like if I'm out doing stuff, I will stop at a new camp. But yeah. I will always make sure that the last place I rested was a camp. Yeah, I'll, I I always make sure that I rest at a camp. Unless I'm just very, like... I, the only time I'll spend money is if it's a caravan. No, because even then, it's... right now, like, because I, I, I'm not using experience... Yeah. It's actually... It it hurts me to spend that money yeah. because it's because like... you're not getting... I could go to a cooking. camp and get the cooking bonus and then get the bonuses from the food. Yeah. It's just for me, it, on, now that I have the lights... I'm doing, I'm like, I'm going to drive everywhere. I'm going to, but it was, it would be nighttime and it's like, I don't want to fucking deal with this bullshit right now. Once you, at a certain point, you can basically just get unlimited AP by, um, because you get the, um, when you get the regalia basically fully modded, um, you have unlimited gas. Like, I think that's one of the last mods is you, you're, you just don't run out of gas anymore. Yeah. Um, so you can just put it to manual drive and just hold the trigger and you'll just drive all the roads in a circle hmm. and just continuously gain AP. Nice. Plus, your car moves faster, so you you gain AP f- like for distance. So it's like a set amount, like every 100 feet you gain one AP. Yeah. So when the car's going faster and doesn't run out of gas, you can just do that a lot quicker. Yeah. But, Eventually, you can... I, I don't know if this is true. Somebody said that the regalia flies. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure if that's it was like true. The, that's some of the final mods, and it's literally... But it's stupid because it, I, I saw this um, giant bomb did a quick look, and they had the, the one of the guys from Gamespot came on to do it because he had beaten the game at that point. Yeah, and he showed it, and it's one of those you you basically have to find a long stretch of open road um, and have it be in the right conditions. Like apparently, it won't fly in the rain, and like you'll hit a certain point, and a button will show up down in the bottom that says take off, and you hit like L two, and it the it transforms into a plane, essentially, and takes off into the sky. Yeah, and you can fly around anywhere, but you have to land back down on a yeah on a road. And, and if you, if you hit anything, you crash and die, and it's game over. Yeah, like, I, but it, at least it's faster way getting around. That's true, because it, it it is it's that's that's one of the most drag things about it. It's just driving. Yeah, and I mean, once you once you leave Lucis, like if you just like do the story, like everything. There's a few parts that like drag on a little bit. But for the most part, the game is just kind of linear at that point. So there's not, like, driving from, like, point to point like there is in Lucis. Yeah. So have you done the side quests for Hurley where he wants you to take yeah. a picture of the... Yeah, I, I'm all out of his. Okay, because where is, is the picture for the... Uh, you take the picture of the, 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 the painting or whatever, the haunted painting. That's not on Lucius? No, it's in Altissia. I think he actually okay. said if you're heading he, to Altissa. He does, but I'm just like... Because you technically... Yes, you get to go back by using the ability, but you technically don't get to go back. So how do you return that quest? Does he come with you? No, no. You, I, I went and I... So because I just did it. I um, I got the quest from him. I You, you basically... You go to, uh, to an... You have to go to an actual rest spot that's not a camp to do it. 
but you go to any rest spot and rather than like resting there's a third option you pick that third option and you can pick to go back to the present go to alticia in the past or go to or stay in lucis basically or whichever one you're at Mm -hmm. um so i just picked to go to alticia i did the quest i needed to do and then i went back to lucis and turned that quest in that's so it's weird and doesn't make sense i agree um, and when you go back to Lucius or go back to Alticia, do you go back to where you were from or where you ported? Um, yeah, you, you go back to the last rest point you were at there, basically. Like whatever rest point you used to go back. Um, so like the first time you go back to Lucis, you go back to um, wherever the boat is that you have okay. to take. Um, and then when you go to Alticia, there's only one, from what I found anyway, there's only one in. And that's the one that you can get the three times experience. Okay. Which reminds me, when you do that, there's two guys at the counter. The guy on the left is just a regular, like, here's, give me 600 and here's, like, one and a half times. The guy on the right has, like, a velvet rope around him. That's, like, the VIP. Yeah. 300 or 30,000 three times. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, the, the whole thing's weird. And because I didn't do any of the Altissa stuff while I was there the first time, I just kind of skipped this. I just went story straight through it. Yeah. Um. Some stuff happens after that that's kind of, like, depressing. And when you go back to Altissa, that none of that stuff has happened yet. And the dialogue is super fucking sad, really. Yeah, like, that. it just... It's it's super weird. But, I mean, they flat out tell you, like, you're traveling to the past, technically, so... Yeah, I guess so. Like, maybe you're reliving life right before you left or yeah, something? Yeah, it, it's weird, but... I don't know. Um, if, w- when you do that quest... So in order for th- th- that's the next one you have for Hurley, the yeah. So in order for that quest to happen, you actually have to take a hunt also. Okay. So when you go to Altissa, you'll 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 meet part of the story is actually meeting the guy that'll give you that stuff. Yeah. He's like a bartender um, on like this like river boat thingy. Because um, Altissa is like a place where like you have to take boats to all of the spots. Okay. It sucks. I I don't like that city very much. Okay. It's super weird to get around. Um. But, like, you talk to the guy, and he'll tell you where to go for the quest. But you go there, and you can't do anything. You actually have to get the hunt from him, too. Okay. So the quest is the take the picture for Hurley and kill a monster for a hunt. Which, that's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah, it's not a big deal. But So I, I didn't realize that. So I went all the way to the fucking quest location and didn't do anything. And then I had to travel all the way back to the dude in order to, like, be like, oh, there's a hunt. Yeah. Great, because they don't tell you that. The worst part, I I can't stand the hunts because you can only do one at a time. Yeah, that is really stupid. But I mean, it makes sense for some of them because like there will be three hunts in the same spot. But then it's like you know what? I, I'll fight them all at one time. I don't care. But it's such it's such a pain in the butt going like being in uh, Lestalum where there's what two tipsters? I think so. Yeah, maybe three. There's at least two. And you have to go talk to him. The Stalem is in such a closed-in area where you have to run out to the road to be able to even call your chocobo, but you're not going to be able to get to anywhere for these hunts. So you have to go to your car, drive to where it's at, get out of your car, fight the thing, drive back, walk to the tipsters, which one is in the back of the damn city. Yeah. It's such a... Fucking pain in the ass. Yeah, well, um, Altissia is just as bad because there is no leaving that city. All the hunts are actually in the city. Okay. But like I said, you have to take these stupid boats to get to all the points because you can't just travel on foot through it all. So you have to, like, map it out to figure out, like, which boat will get you to where you need to be. Oh, and boy. then you ha- And then, like, the city's, like, multiple levels with bridges and stuff like that. So you have to, like, figure out the path to get to where you need to be. Uh, that's gonna yeah. be annoying. I've done. I did like two hunts, and then I'm like, I'm fucking done. I'm yeah. just, I, I'll I stop. I stopped doing hunts, not, and not because they're boring. I, some of the fights are fun, but once I got um, my helix horn for my ultimate weapon, I was done. I gave up. I I actually gave up getting the helix horn for the ultimate weapon for a while too, because it just took way too goddamn long to get that item. You know, it's funny. I. Uh I got that, and I I didn't have the um because that's that's for literally for ultimate weapon, right? Yeah. I didn't have that quest though at the time. I had no. the one before it still because I just Which... hadn't been to talk to Sid in a while. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, so I didn't I didn't realize I I used that item to make magic at one point. The horn. 
Oh, really? So when I realized that, I, I went back to the spot and redid the hunt, and I just got it first try. <sighs> so I just went back, and I, I got the weapon. <laughs> yeah. That, the, the worst part about that one, that hunt, is that you had to run all the way up to go over. Yep. Because I can't fucking make it easy for anybody. And I saw online, somebody was like, we suggest you saving before you go, so this way, if you don't get the item, you could just reload. Motherfucker, it takes longer to reload than it does to kill the bosses, go get the thing, come back, and do it again. I mean, you can also just wait for the things. To, like, you don't have to be in the uh, the hunt to get it. No, the for the helix horn? Yeah. For the double helix horn or whatever? They only showed up on the hunt. The small ones were there, but the big ones, which is what you needed to break the horns yeah. for... Weren't there. You needed to do the hunt. Oh, yeah. See, I've seen the big ones other places. You Well, yeah. You like, could've... I didn't mean right in that area. I just meant in general. Like, yeah. there, are, there are other places nearby that the big ones are at. Yeah, I could have tried to find them there, but I'm like, you know what? I'm getting 900 gil every time I do this anyway, so mine as well. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I like the game more yeah, than I expected to. Um, it's fun. It's very enjoyable. Uh, the combat system's great. I just got the glaive uh, weapon, um, royal weapon. I, I don't use the royal weapons because they hurt you. I, I'm really hoping the more royal weapons you get, it opens up the armature thing more and maybe weakens how much it hurts you. Nope. Which sucks. Because there's actually a point where you have to use a royal weapon. Yeah. Um. So you have to be really careful because every time you use it, you also get hurt. Yeah. So it's this weird, it, like... It's like it's so like they make these awesome ass weapons. They aren't really that much stronger. Yeah, I was gonna say they're than, not great weapons. I mean, they they each have their own particular better set of skills, but it's you're generally weaker. Like, I also constantly forget about the armature. Like yeah. I've used it like twice. Oh, it's it's a pain in the it's a pain in the ass for me because, like I said, I, I I'm in wait mode. So if I t- go to tap it, and if I let go and tap, it'll pop into wait mode real quick so i'll have to move and tap but then i'll hold instead and it'll try to do the tech bar and i'm like no that's not what i fucking want to do that's they what sh- you get for being in wait mode they should have mapped it better is what i'm saying no you shouldn't play no wait they should have mapped it better what, baby mode mapped it better <laughs> like click click the sticks no i i think it's perfect because i don't no, play in because, wait mode because your, your target is r1 and your tech bars dude i've never had problems with it no, you're, you're, it's fucking, because you have to hit them at the same time. It's not holding, it's hitting them, right? Or is it holding? No, it's, you just have to tap it and it turns it yeah, on. Yeah, it's because you have to hit them at the same time. If you hit the tech bar first, it opens up the goddamn tech bar menu. I've never and then had it that, won't I've activate I've never it. had that problem. I have it constantly. It's probably because you're in weight mode. No, it's not because of weight mode, but it's it's not because of weight mode. I'm just it's like. I also never use it because, I mean, A, I don't need to. I use it because I upgraded the armature thing, and now I get AP every time I use armature. Oh, so, I, I did that upgrade too, and then I realized, why did I do this? I never used the armature. I, I used it a lot because I was fighting a lot of... Dude. Every time I fought strong shit, I would fight it because I'm not used to fighting strong shit, so I don't really have a battle routine anymore because I'm always fighting shit that I can kill in two hits. There's a re- So there's a really, really cool battle coming up in Altissa when you get there. Um... You are going to have an even easier time than I did because I was already too high of a level for it, and you're a little bit higher than I am. Oh, I'm. I'm but probably. I know I should save my experience to get the three times, but I'm probually going to level up. Don't like actually like honestly wait until um with where you're at right now because like honestly the game gets linear and it's not going to be any fun. Yeah. Um. Just leave leave the Nyx experience on until you get um near the end of chapter 13 at the earliest oh I mean, i'd have to wait until prompto noctis and ignis are with us with me everybody gets separate experience you know that right yeah so you're gonna have all this extra experience with noctis well you don't get most of chapter 13 you're not fighting so like chapter 13 is a lot more like sneaking around and stuff okay. like that like and when you're fighting you're not getting a ton of experience for the fights because it's like one thing at a time yeah um so, like, yes, like, I did have more experience than those guys did, but not anything Pro- noticeable. Prompto somehow has less experience than everybody else. I don't know how that happened. Probably because he died a couple of times. Yeah, honestly, like, if he dies, then he doesn't get experience. So, like, if you finish the battle with a dead character, they don't get experience. But also, and I know you said it hasn't happened much, anytime that a summon happens, only Noctis gets experience. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, only Noctis gets anything, like, every time that happens. That's so. dumb. Yeah. I guess technically because... He no. He's the one that made the pact with him. 
Yeah, but it's it's not necessarily just him killing things. Like I said, I fought one damn Yojimbo. Yeah. Or I killed one Yojimbo after fighting a bunch of other shit. But, but yeah, I, I only say to wait because, A, a get the three times because that's awesome. Yeah. But also because, like, I had a fight that should have been a lot harder. And I'm glad it wasn't that much harder. But it was still a little bit, it, it was, like, I got to a point where I realized I didn't have to try. I could just hold circle. Yeah. And it, it ruined it a little bit for me. Because it was a very cool fight, like what should have been. Okay. And yeah, and you're already stronger than I was, so... Yeah. They made leveling up too easy in this game. Well, it's well a- I mean, no, they didn't make it too easy in this game. There's too much stuff they, going on. They made it too easy once they gave out an experience ring. That well, ring breaks the game, in well, my opinion. To, 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 if you're using it that way to like store XP to then just go trade it all in for 30,000 gil for three times experience, then yeah, totally. But at the same time, like it does, like I put it on initially just because I wanted to go back and do this the earlier quest stuff and not actually be like leveling up because I want I want to get through at least thirteen before I level up because it's already been so easy. Like, well, I mean, I'm just I I banked experience so that because I could. Yeah, I I popped the thing on as soon as I got it. And I banked it because I could, and it kind of breaks the game because now I sl- I sleep every night. Making the game easier because I don't have to deal with demons. I cooking has way increased. It's it's there's no like I guess there's no super strategy to experience anymore now because that ring makes it way too easy to level up. And it looks like uh, Efrit is a story quest. Okay, but yeah, that's uh that's Final Fantasy 15. We've talked about it for like an hour now or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, about that. Um. Yeah, that's literally, like like I said, other than yeah. that and Animal Crossing, I haven't really played much else. Yeah, I mean, I played a little bit of the Mans, and I did. I had that Magfest and that wedding, so I, I'm hoping to get 15 done uh, this weekend. Yeah, honestly, I don't know when I'm going to finish it. I, I haven't decided if I'm going to drive for Uber or not yet this week at any point in time, but if I don't, I'm just going to be sitting around playing it, I wanna, and I, I have off on Monday. And so we're playing D and D on Saturday, so I'll have all day Saturday, and then Sunday and Monday off. So I'll just sit around and play it nonstop. I'm thinking I should have it done by Monday. I'm hoping so then I can get into other games because I just I, it, it's fun, but there's just so much to do. It's starting to get a little boring. Yeah, and it's like me being the completionist. I want to like all right. I want to get everything done before I move forward. Yeah, I'm not a completionist. I've I've just been enjoying doing this stuff, so that's why I've been... Yeah, like, doing a lot of the stuff is fun, but then some of the stuff is just, like, really, like... Like, some of the side quests that they send you on, like, doing, like, uh, like doing the, um, the, the base, the Empire base. I was just like, this was a waste of time, and it took ten times longer than it should have, because these enemies, even though I'm level 50 and they're 47, they're way too fucking strong. Yeah, is that the... I, I don't... I've only done two bases, and the one was a story base, and I did one other that I think was also story. Two of them were... One was a story base. The other one was kind of a story base that you didn't have to do because you were with... Uh, actually, no, you might have had to do it when you were with Iris, and you parked at Old Dostalem, and you would have to run up and do it. Yeah, I think I that did was that the, one. And that was the first time you met the Dragoon Lady. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the other one was in the desert area of... Lucius. Yeah, because you get the one where, where Ramu gets summoned for the first time and yeah. he obliterates it at the end. Yeah. And then, you, there, uh, yeah, that one other one where you meet, um, I forget her first name, but she's, she's Highwind. Yeah. Like her last name's Highwind. Yeah. Ariana? Ariana Highwind. Yeah. Who's or an awesome Ariana character. Ariana A, whatever. I, I, I like her. She's fun. She yeah. Pop, she pop, So have you had her just randomly pop up yet? Um, she, she came with me to the uh, dungeon. No. So at night, if you're running around um, and demons are around there's a chance that she will show up to help you okay i don't know what i don't know why this happened or what but i was doing i did like a hunt and it was a night hunt i was on my way back and i had fought just like things that were in the area and then all of a sudden one of the um imperial drop ships showed up and it opened up and like she's standing on like the bay and i'm just like do i have to fucking fight her again (laughs) And she jumps out, and like everyone, so they just start talking. They're like, "What are you doing here?" She's like, "I was in the area." And yeah, that's that's the one thing I don't get about this game is the story is so convoluted and ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I, why did why was the Vesper pool 
blockaded, and then all of a sudden it's not. Well, like, it, it just let you in. Well, they were trying to do something at those ruins that you had to get through. But that guy, that Arden guy, he's pulling the strings everywhere. Yeah, but why is he? Why is he being so nice? He's a fucking empire guy that should be trying to kill you. You will find out more in the next chapter. Actually, I know it's but like I'm literally like, the, once you get into Altissia, like all that stuff starts to make a lot more sense. And him in chapter he he has a lot of dialogue in chapter thirteen that explains a lot too. Yeah. There's also make sure when you get to thirteen, and you'll know this when you find it. Look at all the tables um, for notes because there's a lot of notes in there that explain what's going on and basically what the magic tech troopers are and why things are happening the way they are. Well, Highwind already said that they're that they they're generated from demons. So, but wait, just wait. There's more. Yeah. Okay. Is um, there, there going to be a new knife brought out now? But wait, there's more, <laughs> and then a solid flavor injector. No. No, it's not. It's not one of those mores. Nope. But let's move right. on to news. Let's go to news because we've been rambling on too long because nobody sends us goddamn emails, John. Uh so I mean, not a ton of stuff. I just have a few things. Um, uh, the biggest thing that's not really news yet is this week is the Switch reveal. Well, oh, yeah, like 12th, announcement, right? Yeah. So it's Thursday, Thursday at ten thirty Eastern time, PM. Ten thirty Eastern. Yeah. So it'll be ten thirty PM for us. Is when the the live streams happen. Mm, why does it have to be ten thirty? Because it's happening in Japan. I know, but like, why couldn't it be like a half hour later? So then I could just go to lunch and watch it. No, no, ten thirty p.m. Oh, before oh, oh night time. Okay. Like then, then that's fine. Yeah, I'll well, deal with that. Like it's late, not I early. I'm gonna just take Friday off. The no, following, I'm covered. Damn it! Friday is um a treehouse. In the morning, yeah, I forget the exact time for the treehouse, but they'll they'll basically be showing off like games and stuff more. Yeah. So two days of Nintendo stuff coming up this week. So we'll have that to talk about next week. Yeah, um, um I got news. Okay, so, uh, Constantine's coming back. Yep, as an animated series though. Is it an animated series? Yeah. All right, I'll still take. So I, it's is, also, is he being voiced by what's his yeah, name? Yeah, so Matt Ryan's voicing it. Okay. It's going to be like the Vixen web series. Yeah. It's li- literally it's the same thing. It's going to be on Seed. It's going to be like ten to fifteen minute episodes, and it's animated. But oh, it's, which, you know what? I'll take it. If, if that's one way for them to bring the character back, yeah, and it's still in the Arrowverse, yeah. just like Vixen was, and they already like they had the actress that voices Vixen on, in the animated stuff be the character on an episode of Arrow. So yeah, that's not like I'm sure. Like depending if schedules work out, they can have Matt Ryan. Oh yeah, definitely. on the show again, which is neat. So I thought I thought that was pretty sweet. Also, that goes along with it. All the um, DCW verse all back for next season, except iZombie hasn't been. That's not DC. I thought that was Vertigo. Is it DC though? Uh, technically, Verti- Vertigo is DC. I guess it's not like mainstream DC. I guess you could. Or it's not like by DCW uh, like Arrowverse. No, I know what you mean. I'm just saying. Yeah, you're just trying to be a jerk. Yep. Um, and also today was the episode back from uh, Agents of Shield, so. We, yeah, and I Zombie was Vertigo, so it technically is a DC book. So okay. fuck you. <laughs> you <know> what? <laughs> um, Get out of my house. I'll finish this myself. What were you saying though? Uh, today is also the mid-season premiere of Shield. Yes. So yeah, it'll be in like twenty minutes. It'll be fun to watch. Uh, yeah, that that's cool that they renewed all those shows too. Yeah. And they also renewed Supernatural for like a thirty-fourth season. I don't even care at this point. I'm yeah. never watching it just because of how long. Yeah, it is. it's so because I've thought about it a few times. I'm like, you know, people really like that show. I kind of want to watch it, but then I'm like, oh yeah, it's been on for like I thir- I think this it, it was thir- twelve or thirteen is the actual yeah. number. It's like that's too many fucking episodes. Yeah, I no, can't do that. It's ridiculous. Um, so this one is kind of sad ish for somebody maybe. Um, oh boy! Microsoft canceled Scalebound yesterday. Oh yeah, it's, you know that it didn't look shitty. Yeah, it did. Well, I thought it I guess looked, graphically, graphically it looked, okay. it looked nice. <coughs> and I know, like the initial like reveal of it, I thought it looked interesting because it had dragons. But then the more they showed of it, the more it just didn't look good. It looked like a like a poor man's Devil May Cry ripoff. According to Netflix, Supernatural has 11 seasons. So they're on their 12th. Yeah, so they got renewed and for they 13. they got renewed for 13. Um, but yeah, so that game was supposed to come out sometime this year, I think. Because it got delayed last year to 2017. Yeah. And now it's just canceled. Which, I mean, you, when you have to think about it, though, like, 
all the time and money that was put into that game, and now it's just never going to see the light of day. Yeah, and I believe it. I believe it was a Platinum's game game. Yeah. So like they were developing it, but it was from Microsoft Studios, so it was a first party IP. Yeah. I don't know exactly how that works with a third party developing like a first party IP, but either way, yeah, it's gone. Um, yeah. Not happening. That sucks. I guess yeah, a little bit. Too bad. I guess. Um. Because, I mean, in my opinion, like, the Xbox is weak for exclusives. So, I mean, everyone has the, has their own opinion on that stuff. But, yeah. you know, a lot of their sk- exclusives aren't great. Oh, no, yeah. they they The only reason I have an Xbox One is for exclusives. And when was the last time I turned on my Xbox One? There you go. It's, um, it's weak. It's terrible. So, this to, to go from that to other just, like, what the fuck news. Um, did you hear about the name change that's happening on the internet? No. Yahoo. It's no longer going to be Yahoo. Oh, boy. It's going to be Alt-Taba. I'm just done. Next. A-L-T-A-B-A. They're being Next. purchased by Verizon. Next. For a lot of money. I don't care. Um, their CEO and co-founder, two different people, are leaving. Just... And they're being renamed. I didn't know anyone still used Yahoo. No. For it... like... I, yeah, I actually, use Yahoo for fantasy football. And sometimes. actually, Erica, Erica's email account is a Yahoo mail account that she's had forever. But I don't think anyone goes there for search engine anymore. Yeah, we used Yahoo for fantasy football, so now we're going to be using Alt Tab for fantasy ball. Nice. I didn't realize this either because in the article I read, Yahoo had the had the option in 1998 to purchase Google for a million dollars. Really? Yeah, because that like Google was just getting started at that point, so like they weren't the juggernaut they are now. Oh Yahoo, you make bad decisions. Yeah, they did. Do you have anything else? Because I have two more quick ones. Uh, oh, the um the little kids. From Stranger Things, they're going to be up in Cherry Hill. Yeah, that's not uh, really news, though. I know, but it's still something neat if you're interested, if you're local. Yeah, that, that's that thing. Like, uh, like we went the one time. Yeah, like I've, it's just there's too many people for such a yeah. small thing. And like, it's, it's not big either, but I want to go to it. But however, how many people are going to go see those damn little kids? Yeah, I, it wouldn't be worth it. And the thing is, like, the, because they're kids. They're limited to how long they can actually work, quotes. So they have to take more breaks, so your, their lines will be even bigger because people are going to be waiting longer. Yeah, exactly. So it just it won't be worth it. But and it's neat. It'd be neat to like meet those little kids and be like, hey, you're going to be me when you grow up because you're going to be chubby and nerdy just like me. You but, don't know that. No, I don't. Well, I'm talking to the black kid. No. <laughs> um, well, uh, Aflac confirmed that he is going to be directing the solo Batman film. Uh, I heard some news that that might not be happening or something. Yeah, that was a few weeks ago. He had said tension about things. He had said something a few weeks ago that like he he wasn't sure if he was directing and that he wasn't going to do the movie until they had a solid script. Yeah, but then like he like restated or something like that that like no like they're working on a script and he will be directing it. Yeah, so there is going to be a solo Batman movie directed by Affleck. Okay. Um, he's also, I believe, co-writing the script with Jeff Johns. Okay. So, that's cool. Um, and then the only other thing I have you won't care about at all. Um, Ben Riley is back as the Scarlet Spider. I saw that. That's cool. cool. I mean, kind of. He does, He's not wearing a blue hoodie, which is fucking depressing. No. But his suit has a hood, which is weird. Yeah, it's weird to have a hood and a mask. I mean, like, Spider-Gwen has it, but her costume looks cool. Yeah. Like, so it, like, fits hers. Yeah. But his is, like... He's got, like, a Spider-Man costume, but it just has a hood sewn into it. So he's the green Spider-Man. No, it's like a red suit. It's the, red and black. The red and black hood Spider-Man. I know. Do you, have you ever seen the Scarlet Spider? No. Like, the original one? No. Like, he literally, like, he had, like, the red, like, spandex suit on, but over top of it, he wore a blue hoodie with the sleeves cut off. Okay. Like, just, like, a normal, like, hoodie that, like, you or I would wear that had the Spider logo on the front of it. That's weird. No, it was awesome because it was the '90s. Yeah, it's the '90s. I'm trying to think if I have any other news. I don't think I do. Um, don't think I shared anything on Facebook or anything to of note because you know me. I don't do news. I listen to you guys. Yeah. See, so that was '90s Ben Wright. Okay. Blue hoodie over just red spandex and pouches. It. The 90s were a time of pouches in comic pouches. books. Yeah, yeah, I know that much. And, like, the, I think, I don't think it was his Scarlet Spider. It was when he actually was Spider-Man that his, um, he he had the thigh pouch thing going on. That I just don't understand how that worked for any hero. 
Like, how did you do any of the crazy hero stuff you did by having, like, this thing wrapped around your thigh and it not falling off? Yeah. Because, like, it's not like that thing was being held up with anything. But, yeah, that's that's all the news I had. I'm excited for Ben Riley, kind of. I'm kind of disappointed by Clone Conspiracy, but by the sounds of it, uh, this Scarlet Spider book they're doing should be interesting. Yay. I guess. Yeah. Sorry. You should be. I, I don't have a lot of interest in that, so. Well, maybe you should. I don't think I have any other news. I think that's all. All right. Um, well, then we're done. I did see one stupid thing, which I don't know if this is news. I don't know how long ago it was, but it was a video on Facebook somebody shared that apparently the director of Frozen has come out and confirmed that Anna and Elsa's parents are also the parents to Tarzan, that they didn't die in when their ship went I over. saw that like two years ago, and it wasn't like a confirmation. The the Did you actually read the article or whatever? It was a video this so, time. If it's it's probably based off the same thing, and the people who like the director or writer or whatever, they can't confirm it because it's Disney. They can't like confirm something like that. But they basically said that's awesome. I like that idea. Like they they said it a little differently than that, but they were basically going along with like, yeah, you know what? That's a great like theory that fans had. That's totally that's that could really be what happened. Yeah, I hate when like people like do shit like that. Like they make a video and they just don't use the actual quotes or anything. There's like, this person confirmed that this was happening, but they, they really didn't. Like, if you paid any fucking attention and weren't just interested in clickbait. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was a Facebook video, and I was like, that's not really, no, possible. I don't think you, as a director, can't confirm that unless you have Disney's approval. Exactly. So, no, I, I thought it was dumb. I just wanted to be like, yeah, I saw this thing, because it seemed kind of cool, but no. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. That's everything. No emails. Because everyone's jerks. No emails. David. He doesn't even listen to us anymore, I bet. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Know. He has a kid, so he's excused. Yeah. I guess Sean has a kid now, too, so he's excused. But no. I'm going to I'm gonna hold it to him next time I have D&D. Sean, if you don't like send us an email the next time we meet for D&D, your character is going to be brutally maimed. Probably going to lose a hand. And you're a monk. You kind of need those. And with that, if you'd like to email us... You can send those emails to social at one-quest.com. You can also find our website at www.one-quest.com or podquest.club. We're also on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline or Twitter at one underscore quest. Uh, you can find all the podcasts and everything on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play and all those other fun podcast services. We might also have another URL that will be linked to the website, but that's down in the future. I'll let you know that later. <laughs> Are you buying something? I'll tell you later. All right. Well, that's the show, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yes. Good job. Yes, it is. It's on. It's It's on. It's on. It's on. All right, let's hurry this up so we can play. Uh, so I can play Final Fantasy. How far in? Uh, I'm on chapter eight. I'm getting everything done before I get on the boat. Okay, so I, can, I I'm actually asking more so I know how much I can talk about it without yeah. spoiling for you. I didn't get on the boat yet, and I know once you get on the boat, you can't go back. So okay. you're you are at the boat though. Like yeah. that's the like your next story mission is to basically my get next the fuck story on the mission boat. is go to Kyom and get on the boat. Have you been to Kyom yet? I've been to Calm. I'm doing some of the side quests there. So like you went there, you started a garden and everything? Yeah, I started the garden. Did you um, get the berries you needed? Berries. So if you talked to the chef at um, Golden K, or Quay, whatever oh, right, it's called. Right, right, right. There's, um, she gives you a quest really early, on, really early on called Buried Memories. I just got that quest, actually. Yeah, so if... Because it was, it was available in Chapter 3, but I didn't have the car in time. So I was like, fuck this. Right, I'm not going to get it. Yeah, so until I got the car. So yeah, that um that quest in order to get that item because it, it's never specified anywhere. Mm -hmm. You have to do. Um, Iris will give you the ability to run the garden at that place they're staying, and you have to exchange the carrots to the guy for the berries. Yeah. And oh, I didn't. Re I I didn't realize that was the berries. Yeah, the, whatever type of berries he's offering, that's the ones that she wants for the pie. Okay. And then, did you watch Brotherhood? No. I didn't watch any of that stuff. So, uh, do you mind if I spoil something from Brotherhood? I'm probably not going to watch it. All right. So, each of those episodes was about, like, each of the guys, basically. Yeah. Um, the one about Ignis, 
it basically shows that like he was kind of like a Noctis's caretaker when he was a teenager. Yeah, like he didn't live with him or anything like that, but like he went by, made him dinner, and made sure he was like getting his shit done. Yeah, and one of the things he was always doing was he was baking this particular pastry, trying to f- get the right recipe. Um, and it ends up being something that Noctis had had when he was a kid visiting Luna. Okay. Like, it was something that, like, she had given him, and he was, you know, a little kid. He loved it, but he hasn't had it since, because he hasn't been back there since. Yeah. Um, so, like, over all those years, like, Ignis had been trying to, like, figure out the recipe. And so, like, in the episode, he'd con- he'd occasionally, like, have, like, a new, like, pastry for Noctis to try. Okay. And I think they even make reference to it once in the game. Uh, like, it's just, like, a random, like, Probably line. something while driving type thing. Yeah. Um... I, I can't recall. But so there, some stuff gets said after you complete that quest that ties back to that. Okay. So just keep that in mind when you turn that quest yeah. in, that Ignis has been trying to perfect this pastry for them. I have the ultra lights for the regalia, so I don't... Well, hang on. Let's start the show first. No. No, people got to listen to this banter after the show. No. We're going to get started. Everything looks good. Levels are okay. I hope. Are they? I mean, they're, when you don't do that, they are. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I appreciate that. 